Hello, I'm Peachy. I'm Patrick. Hello, I'm Jeff. And today we are joined by a revered sculptor, <laughs> miniature artist, and XGW staff member I've only just <laughs> discovered, uh, Paul Hicks, everybody. Hello. Paul, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, as we have started doing, can you give us a brief description as to who you are and what you do? Uh, my name's Paul Hicks, and I consider myself retired because I get to do what I like every day. Uh, and I make historical miniatures mm. primarily. Yes, I'm a miniature sculptor. I think I, I'm surprised by how many of your miniatures have actually probably painted over the years because you are quite prolific when it comes to historicals. Yeah. Arguably. But yeah, because <laughs> I need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Why do you work so much? <laughs> yeah, to, live, yeah. <laughs> yeah. to live, Peter. To live. Yeah, because my, my, my friend Steve, he, he, he used to paint lots of historical, still does, um, and he was always talking about your stuff. He's like, oh, yeah, I've got some Paul Hicks stuff and this and that. You've done everything, I think nearly every period, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I get excited about... <sighs> Don't know, not m more historical, but sort of like the Im historical image, you know, like the aesthetics of history. So I'm not, if you ask me, you know, what did the 7th Armoured Division do, do in the Western Desert? Yeah, I couldn't really tell you, yeah. but I might be able to tell you what they look like. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's yeah. what I get excited <laughs> about, you know, and interested. Um, yeah. But yeah, working for quite a few people means that you get a lot of varied projects which keeps it sort of nice and fresh yeah so one week i could be doing sort of plains indians and then the next week it will be um british infantry for africa 1840s so yeah it's definitely sort of yeah all over the place which is good so you you're quite like i say prolific there's there's a lot of miniature ranges out there um can mm. you just list a few that you've just for our views, because they might not... Because they, they'll be like, oh, I didn't realise that, because I didn't realise Empress Miniatures, you did a lot of stuff for Empress Miniatures. Yeah, 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 well, Empress so. Miniatures, yeah. They they came to me when I started, or when they started, so... Um, so who do I work for? Well, I, I started <laughs> off... Who do you work for? <laughs> yeah, did a... Well, when I first started off, it was working sort of with Gripping Beast. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And then from Gripping Beast, I start... Uh, sort of started to muck about with some World War Two figures and then started a range for myself which became Bolt Action Miniatures. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that so, is interesting. I did not know that. No. Yeah, yeah. So back, <laughs> so back in... So, yeah, I was... Uh, about 2004, we were playing at our local club, which was Richmond Gamers, uh, or London Gamers, but it was in Richmond. We were playing, mucking about with... Um, 40k but for I think it's called Warhammer 44 it was like a, a fan based oh cool yeah man. so we were um, we were just playing big battles with that um, and 28 mil World War 2 wasn't a big thing I think there was Black Tree designs um, old Old Glory 15s oh, yeah, old Glory, yeah, yeah which were the old Kitney and Company um, figures and they had a limit but they didn't do everything so working at Gripping Beast for a bit um, and I was just making like a, maybe a German medic, getting that in the mould. And one of the friends of Gripping Beast, a guy called Simon Bardry, was like, oh, yeah, these look really good. You should have a go at making some of your own stuff and your own range. And he said, oh, look, I'll put in, I think it was like 500 quid, and you do 500 quid's worth of sculpting, and then we'll see how it goes. We'll get a mould yeah. going. And that was like in 2004. I think we had like, we had two moulds, um, so that was 32 figures we had and we took it, I think, 2005, we took it to Sheffield. I think it was triples at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to triples, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so my mate Simon, who's he's like a project engineer, he built these Perspex, um, like, cases and then each disc had one of the set of the figures and they were in, so they looked really innovative. Yeah. And we had those and then people come, oh, these are amazing. And I think we made, like, a couple of hundred quid and it paid for our trip. Yeah, and we was like, "This is amazing!" You know, <laughs> we've actually had a meal out of this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it, it sort of it it snowballed from there, and uh, yeah, we we had it for a good five years, and it just grew and grew and grew. 
and people were coming up. We'd go to the shows. The first year we had it, we did like all the shows that you could do because mm. it was sort of free, free advertising. Well, we we thought it was free advertising, but obviously you had to pay for your stand. Yeah. But you got that money back. But you were telling people all about you. And all these other companies, no, everyone does 20 mil World War Two. I don't know, you're mad. And <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. No, no, we're, I'm playing with this stuff. We're, we're excited by it, you know, and it just sort of snowballed. And then it got to the point where we just couldn't. He, Simon was living in Portsmouth. I was living in West London at Ealing yeah. at the time. And it was like I'd finish work at, in South London, drive to his on a Thursday night, pack stuff, and then drive home sort of like about one o'clock in the morning to get up again the next day where I was working at the time. And then we were just like, we need to sell this. Mm. We need to do, you know, get out. And so um, I was just starting to do some, because starting up um, Bolt Action Miniatures um, put me in contact with a guy, Lon Weiss of Brigade Games in the States, because he said, oh, you know, we we set up a website, or Simon set up a website. I have no idea how those things happen. Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the guy uh, Lon just went. Um, I want to distribute. Can I buy all your stuff? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So we just sort of pack the stuff off to him, and he said, "Oh, would you you do some some work for me?" And I went, "Yeah, okay, yeah." And then it's uh, it's just word of mouth, and it it's yeah. just built. And I still work for Lon now. Yeah, because I, I guess during that period as well, like because I, I attended loads of events like Salute and stuff like that, yeah. that was the way to get yourself pushed. Because I, I remember early days of working at Workshop, I'd go around with Duncan and my mate Steve, and they got to a point where there wasn't a miniature range we didn't know. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't tell you all the sculptors, but certainly yeah, uh, yeah, there's yeah, a miniature yeah. range that you know I, I was very familiar with, like Gripping Beast, and, yeah, and all that, and Black Tree Designs, uh, yeah. Eureka Miniatures, and all yeah, that. So yeah. there's all sorts of names that I could just remember. But since like lockdown, not a clue, <laughs> not a clue who exists out there now. Oh really? Well, there's so much. There's so yeah. much you know, all the 3D printing side of stuff. Yes. My, my question I was going to ask you actually because you just you know th- threw it out there. What does 500 quid's worth of sculpting look like? Was it like you know um, like 50 figures or is it like a... no? Um, at that time, it felt like a lot of miniatures. Mm. As I've progressed, and I mean this is nearly, I mean I've been doing it. Before before 2004, I'd done it on a sort of a part-time basis. There was uh, how I started was I, I ended up, um, what was I doing? So I worked for Games Workshop from 95 to 2000. And then at 2000, one of my gaming buddies that used to, one of the regulars said, look, there's a, a job coming up at my wood flooring company that I work for. You'll be starting right at the bottom, but you'll work your way through up. There's commission if you sell. And I was like, oh, I'm quite good at selling. Um, yeah, and then at that time, being a manager, you'd sort of like twiddle your thumbs like halfway through the day at a games workshop yeah, working. Yeah. And I was like, you can never paint anything of your own. Yeah. It's like, right, okay, yeah. well, you'll see that in the magazine that all that stuff was painted while working at games workshop. <laughs> 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 but then... You know, you'd paint your own stuff and people would come and go, oh, that looks really good. Oh, I'll get some of those. So you probably were generating sales anyway. So um, my mate Luke, he said, oh, come and have an interview. And the day before an interview, there was a big, um, there was a regional manage, uh, manager's meeting, which took about four hours to get to on public transport. So mm-hmm. that wasn't fun. Got there and they had a new, I think they were hobby managers. We had a, a hobby manager at the time and he was like, you're going to do this. This is going to be great. We're going to do this. And again, you need to do this, this. And I just took, and went, no, nah, I can't be asked with that. <laughs> so I, I walked I think up. I remember to, the hobby manager. Yeah, I walk, walked up to the area manager. I went, and this was the day before I had an interview for the new job. And I went, no, nah, it's not for me anymore. Yeah. I'll see you later. You know, and then I went, oh, okay. And the next day, luckily, my mate had put in quite a good word for me and I worked at the uh, the wood flooring company and then i had a five thousand pound pay increase oh wow and being at the bottom i was like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. okay yes yeah, it's, it's not a, a lot a, a surprise that workshop doesn't pay very well no <laughs> <laughs> all through history yeah <laughs> um so yeah and then I, I just started um making figures and one of our gaming group 
a guy called Andy Sherwell just purchased Gripping Beast, I think, at mm. the time. Knew I made, I did conversions because I didn't never, never made like a full sculpt. It'd always just be I'd cut bits up of figures, make conversions, but mm. I'd try and keep them to the same sculpt so it looked within. You know, it all looked like a cohesive. Um, figure in the end and then just started off making little bags and then progressing bags and, and things and uh, Andy at Grim B said oh why don't you make the odd figure and come down and I would work like a my day off at the wood flooring company I'd go and muck about and make make nice. toy soldiers which none of them made it to sale I don't think because <laughs> they looked awful um, so at that that just sort of snowballed and then I think I made uh, made a few figures, and then a guy just came up to me that we got to know, um, and he said, "Look, I've got this. Um, I think it was Old Glory Fifteens. They said, look, they won a World War One range from 1914 to so the early part of the war.' Yeah. So, oh yeah, I'm really interested in that. And uh, you know, how about making it? And I went, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, me and another guy, Andy Dormer, we. Who, were, who was helping out at Gripping Beast at the time, we thought, yeah, let's have a go at this. And I just, this was, I've been working at the Wood Flooring Company, and I said, I really would like to go and do that. And they went, yeah, we know you're interested in this, and this is something you want to do. You know, you have our blessing, you know, you're not leaving us in the lurch. Yeah, go, yeah, go and do yeah. that. And I was like, that's oh, good. great, that's really nice of you. And I spoke to my parents, and they were like, this is what you want to do. We'll back you. And it's like, great, you know, so it's fantastic. And then I was working at the Grip and Beast shop, um, making the odd figure for them, um, doing this World War One range, and then it sort of spiralled. But unfortunately, I just couldn't get to where I wanted to be. Um, and then the wood flooring company phoned me out the blue and just went, we'd like you to come back, but we'll pay you full wage, but you can work part-time. Oh, wow. Um, so you can get to do what you want. And it's like, That's really nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like, oh, okay. Like a perfect storm almost. Yeah, yeah. So, and then over that time, I was where um, Brigade Games came on. I had bolt action miniatures in that part time. So that's back in 2004. So I started to pick up more trade sculpting. And I think 2007, it got to the point where I was, wasn't, uh, I was earning less money going into work at the wood flooring company and I was staying at home and making toy soldiers so and uh, at the time I was working Saturdays and we had like a big social group of friends not to do with war gaming but we used to go clubbing so that impacted on my social life and then we all decided we we're all going to go to Ibiza back in 2007 and I just walked into my wood flooring company and went uh, I'm just going to go and sculpt for the and they went, yeah, when do you want to finish? <laughs> well, I'm going to Ibiza tomorrow. Yeah, why don't you finish today? I was like, <laughs> what? <Great. laughs> I just, like, I can't imagine, like, having an employer like that. No, <laughs> no, they were lovely, a lovely family. They, yeah, one of the guys, it was three brothers. They're still going now. It's a massive, they used to um, supply wood floors to the Natural History Museum. A oh, while, wow. so yeah, but it was like a, a small, small um, warehouse in Wandsworth in West, uh, South London. But they, they had like a, a forest in Romania where they cut all the wood and then they sent it over to. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, so it's it'd be, massive. That'd be really nice parquet floor and stuff. Yeah, 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 parquet yeah. floor, solid yeah. wood floors. Yeah, yeah I could talk a good wood floor. And still going now, which is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going. You could talk yeah. a good wood floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So was it more sales based stuff that you didn't actually practically make? No, no, it was all sales stuff. based. Yeah, yeah, all sales based. Yeah, which I like. You know, I quite like um, the sales bit. You know. Yeah. Which is good. So, um, do you ever like a period that you prefer sculpting? No. So you're just happy to just happy. Well, apart from ancients. <laughs> yeah. Um, not because I don't like it. It's just more fleshy bits. So if it's got uniform, I know if it's got a uniform on. It w it won't take as long as doing fleshy bits. Because you've got an and all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to yeah. Deal with, yeah. And yeah. I, you know, you can sort of gauge where if I push a tool in it, it that way, it's going to create a fold either side. Yeah. So I can just jab the tool in and then keep going. You know, do like sort of five at a time. It's yeah. not as intensive as doing. Is that down to the fact that you got so put off doing the thong on the? 
giant here. <laughs> yeah, I've, you just don't want to see flesh anymore. No, that's no, really put me <laughs> off now that I have to look. I mean, at we'll the... take a photo of it in a bit and put it up. But wait, I'll, oh, I'll oh, see if oh, I can get it. Bare that. skin thong. Or is it a bare skin? <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> <tear>. dingleberries. <laughs> oh God! Wait, turn it, turn it we around call again. We call them for <laughs> Klingons. Klingons. There we go. Oh yeah, close That's up. A shot. Close up of his ass. Uh -huh. That is the first figure I ever sculpted. Oh, amazing! Spinning round. So, full sculpt. So it's yeah. all by hand. Everything you do. Yeah, yeah. It's all yeah. by hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a? Um, do, do you prefer that medium? Have you tried digital? Um, I really don't. I don't want to do digital. That's cool. I'm probably like a luddite, and there's. Oh, well, Gary Morley was saying the same thing. Yeah, he, he, prefers, yeah, he hasn't moved over. Yeah. Has he? So. Yeah. I think from such an early, like, I mean, we had a model railway when I was two. I mean, one of my earliest memories has been warned from not going near the, the loft hatch when they were building the model railway, <laughs> mum and dad. You know, don't go near the loft hatch, come over here. You know, that was like first. So we've always had models or my mum um, is really into her art. So she sort of really got us into drawing at an yeah. early age. I think that was more so she could watch the Sullivans while I drew. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, there's a TV show I haven't heard mentioned in many a movie. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't well, even know what it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like, uh, it was an Australian uh, soap opera that was set during the Second World War. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. It's so like a precursor to Neighbours. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> n n yeah. It's like Neighbours, the war years. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mel Gibson was in one, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I mean, neighbours and Emma Wade had the same thing, didn't they? Because yeah, yeah. Like, oh, well, uh, the neighbours had nailed up everyone in Margot Robbie and Gang yeah. Pierce and God knows who. Oh, Russell Crowe, I believe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Blooming out, yeah. Good eye, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that Enfield rifle? <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to get some more voiceovers like that, please. Germans, whisk. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'd all work. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Just dropping his Avino everywhere. I leaned on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, I've always been, like, the house has always had, like, mum's always been sort of That's telling fine. me to make, you know, do arty things. And my dad was always sort of, we had this model railway that we built together and I had model kits, you know, all my, my pocket money used to be spent on model kits and it just sort of snowballed from there really mm. so i mean i've done green stuffing yeah more to fit, fill gaps and yeah dry things and stuff like that and i still it, like my, my friend steve he, he was an army painter he's gone on he does digital sculpting now i still see it as like a weird magic where you just have a wire armature yeah, and you, it, I guess it's the mind's eye. You've already got it in your your head how it looks. Because sculpting for me, even when I was like, because I was doing art college and illustration, we did like three D sculpture and stuff. I always found it like just a bit hard for my brain to work out how you see that. Because a drawing, I can easily just like work it out my head yeah. because it's two D. Three D's always been that sort of thing. I never quite delved into and probably should at some point. But yeah, I've, well, it's it's like everything. I it's not like I just went out and went. I'm going to make. Mm sculpt figures because you know i had tried and again it was like this is i can't do this mm. you know you you look at people who scratch built figures and you go like oh, man, have they managed to do that yeah, you know it's fair so but it would start off uh, like just making a pouch or just doing one thing trying to get that and then once you sort of understand look at things in shapes mm. so if um if it's a pouch it just starts off as a square and then you just mush it around a bit yeah and i think just as i mean the first those world war one figures that i did when like 20 years ago and like christ they <laughs> look like something coughed up really <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's compared to what i can do now mm. it's just I kind of just learn on the job yeah. as opposed to being able to, because I mean, when I started, a lot of people said, oh, you need to draw a lot, you need to do this, and you need to study anatomy. And I'd like, I've never studied anatomy. I've no, I haven't drawn in years. Mm. I mean, I've got a GCSE A in art, but yeah. um, I haven't drawn anything for years. So it's just, I think that's just the repetitive nature yeah. of yeah. sculpting so much has, has created it. But I've always wanted to, I've always been marvelled at people that can make stuff out of, you know, just out of nothing using their hands. And that's that's where I get the enjoyment of creating something. Yeah. And I, I'm really not sure. I'm, I may well 
eat my hat, you know, in 10 years' time and go, like, I'm actually having yeah, so much yeah. fun on a digital screen. But I just having the... Yeah, the physical. Physical, yeah. Because yeah. there's a guy, when we started off Bolt Action Miniatures, we got a guy, Ian Armstrong, who runs SHQ Miniatures, and he didn't fly rockets to the moon or anything. No, 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 <laughs> no. His dad didn't. Yeah, it's, it's not. Um, he said, "Oh, I, I, we got talking to him on the show scene, and uh, he said, oh, it was said, can you make us something?'" And then me and my mate Simon's like, "Can you make an eighty-eight German eighty-eight millimeter?" Oh wow! And we're, like people going, "Why do you want that? Because you never use it on." No, I want it. Because it will look cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't care what you do with it. I want one. And he produced it out of plastic card. Oh, wow, yeah. So he does everything, cuts it, measures, just calculator, plastic, yeah. and a sharp blade. You know, wow. And that, to me, as opposed to... I'd, I, I can appreciate someone producing something like that out of, out of scratch. Yeah, as, yeah. You know, I'm sure it takes a lot of skill and a lot of... to produce it on computer, but... The digital, sc- I just to me that's magic, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to see Dave Andrews do that a lot. He used to have like um, a lot of well, it was the white PVC sort of stuff that he used to carve into in like plastic, yeah. Card. And um, I remember one day he was like struggling with something, and we, we'd ordered like stuff from like some random expo um catalogue where we used to get our super glutes and things. And we got some calipers, like some digital ones. Oh, right, and I was like, Have you ever used these before? And because you know, he was like trying to get a measurement. He was like, no, I don't tend to. I have all these circular things that I just, because like when he makes yeah, towels yeah, yeah, and yeah. fittings, he just had all these different like circular pipes that it was just his way of yeah. making all these fits. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it makes yeah. a lot of sense. But it was always mad just seeing like how he would like make like doors and like brickwork and stuff like that. It was all just like carving into things and like, just making like little um, rivets and stuff. It was just genius to watch, which yeah. is where I got a lot of my inspiration for like doing my own kit bash and my own scenery builds. But I'd never be able to make it into a product that would then be engineered that obviously that was his yeah I, I, with what i do it's a lot more forgiving the the manufacturing because basically it's just a rubber type well yeah rubber yeah. mold so you've got a, a lot of give but when you're producing something that needs to be metal mold you know mm. in in a metal mold it's that again is a, a discipline i'm not i haven't got to yet maybe it's historicals generally firmly rooted in um making things by hand and green stuff and kind of like more, dare I say, old-fashioned. Yeah, old um, school. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Come on, Granddad, get with, <laughs> get with the programme. <laughs> yeah, I think I think so, because it's mainly... I think most of the... I mean, I'm probably are generalising at the moment, but it's somebody that's produced something for themselves. Mm. The, the setup costs are a lot cheaper. Yeah. And then you're producing something that you want and then you can put it into a market like going to the shows where it's not actually you're paying for a table mm. and people are paying for casting sometimes it just pays for people's hobby yeah and it yeah i was thinking actually when you were saying that because i was like oh but the perry's dealing plastic and there's a company that's dealing plastic oh but they all start off as 3d sculpted three ups and stuff like that yeah yeah so, oh do they yeah yeah, yeah. So oh, right. literally just like yeah they are actually Cause still was, doing it yeah because i heard the term oh was it with the eldar um you know I can't remember the name of it. Uh, like the Eldar, like tank or whatever it is. Oh yeah, the ground. Yeah, tank yeah, thing, yeah, that was straight yeah. up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's sculpted by hand, three times the size, yeah. scanned and then shrunk down. Yeah. Well, plastic. it was pentagram. So I, I visited where um, the Perrys had their stuff done, and you can watch. They they put them in a like a a flat, I'm, I. And then what they do is they get like um, a pen. To trace over, and then it. Mm-hmm goes three times down into a little engraving tool into the the actual metal. Oh, right. So, I mean, this was about 10, 15 years ago. So, you know, they may have invested in a different way of doing it, but it is literally just to take that stylus over yeah. the figure oh, right. in sort of a block of where you want it to be in a mould. Yeah. And then it replicates it over here in a block of metal, which will become the mould. Mad. That's interesting. That yeah. sounds just like some kind of wizardry that I'm too stupid to understand. <laughs> so it says the guy who's really good at v- videography and cameras. So yeah. Sure, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. There's a red, the uh-huh. red button. Well, uh, I don't even hit the button anymore. Jeff hits the button. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just I've been promoted. I got promoted. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So, I mean, um, you've done a lot over the years and um, some of the recent stuff you've been working on is like um, Baron's War and yes. stuff like that. You've got yep. some other projects which we'll talk about yep. in a minute. Um, <laughs> you, you, you kindly donated a Rifleman Peach. You, you nailed my head <laughs> and my face, so uh, kudos. Um, what... When it comes to sculpting, have you had like things where you just I want to nail this this design or I want to get this likeness right? Have you ever had to like do an actual likeness to someone? Yeah, yeah, I've done myself. So I've done like the sharp actors for brigade games, and I've done a lot of not figures for brigade games, sort of historical. I did um, Steiner from Cross of Iron, oh, not yeah. oh, Steiner from Cross of, yeah. yeah, for Empress Miniatures, but that that's always a character I've wanted to do. Yeah. Um, I did, uh, there's a podcast we have ways of making you talk, which is Al Murray and James Holland. Mm. Yeah. A, a anyway. couple of those for to help raise some money for one of their favourite charities. Um, that was without them knowing. I just did it and then. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, I've done this. Oh, so okay. you made Al Murray. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I, yeah, I did those over lockdown actually because he, he was like building tanks on their live stream and I sort of, did their oh, faces on some 135th yeah. figures and sent them to Yeah, because he's very into his history, isn't yes, he? Yes, yeah, yeah. So I've done a lot of likenesses, but it's you can put the the putty on the, well, I'm going to do the heads, and just as so you put that, that first cut in to make the, the brow, you can go, that's going to look exactly like them. Yeah. From the get-go. And other times you'll do it and you go, this is going to take about six, seven times. Yeah, yeah. So it's either you hit it first time, and it, it goes completely right. And then other times you just go, oh. yeah, they're going to have to accept this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, is that a model thing or is it a state of mind? Do you think? Um, I think it's a bit of both. I think, because I, I watched, well, I watched, watched the show quite a lot. Um, but it's, if you can catch the, a picture of in that character mm, yeah. you might not even hit the likeness but it, there's the atmosphere of that person yeah, yeah 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 so if you can get them into like a um get the atmosphere and make them look like their natural pose then it it, it carries over yeah, yeah. and it works bold prominent neanderthal brow <laughs> gaunt cheeks <laughs> well you, yeah there's some some key areas that I could catch with you that yeah, yeah. was quite easy. Yeah. Tiny ears. Tiny, yeah. <laughs> no, that's a bit too much. Yeah. Make them smaller. Because um, it is some people are e easier, aren't they? I was I remember um I remember going to a wedding and there was someone there doing caricatures. Yes. And the, when we walked in, the people who were having this couple who were having theirs done, they um they spotted me and then they were like, get him next, get him next. <laughs> and the the character show guy turns around and looks at me and I went, I'm not going next. I'm not giving you an easy job. Got to work for money. Big glasses and a quiff. I thought, you know what I mean? I could give that to a three-year-old and he'd still make it look like me. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, that. and to be fair, he sort of looked back at the company and went, yeah. two minutes, that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had a few times where people like sketched us, haven't they? And yeah. It's like, I've been like, glasses, beard, hair, glasses, beard, hair, bold. <laughs> yeah. 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 The only thing is increasingly as we've done with our, uh, our, our, most, our t shirts is the fact increasingly I'm starting to become aware which one I am do you how grey people start to make me look <laughs> oh yeah it's because of your civil war beard it's my civil war yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 got to look grey and it look like it's been on me since the civil war because I, I was going to say like in the art that we've had done of the three of us um, like me and you look similar but they seem to make me ginger yeah they make um, you ginger yeah. and me grey yeah. yeah. you, you are strawberry go. blonde Patrick <laughs> yeah. I've, got, I've got brown hair and a ginger beard I, I disagree <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, because <laughs> well, uh, I heard I heard that ginger people don't lose their hair. Is that right? You don't you don't get receding hairline. Uh, my brother ginger. is ginger and he has no hair like me. Oh, okay, fair enough. So he's yeah. he's, he's bold but as the rest. I take of that back. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when we were at workshop, there's a little drawing there of Peachy, and uh, there was a, a lovely uh, lass called Sarah, uh, called Sarah. She she drew like little images for everyone yeah, on, yeah. on Warcom, and unfortunately, there was like. Roger, myself, Adam Troke, and a load of other guys in the department that were just bold, bold. with facial hair. And it's like, how do you make them all look different? <laughs> so she just stuck like a random helmet <laughs> in my favourite uh, Imperial Guard regiment. That was like, yeah, that's definitely me because yeah. I'm holding that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I can look at that. I can be like, yeah, like that. You, yeah, it could pass as like. But we all look the same when generic it comes to bold like, when you line them all next yeah. to you, it's like, it could be any of us, really. Yeah. <laughs> generic bold guy. 
cool. love it. So you worked a workshop for five years. Yeah. Uh, and we've got a question. Someone, um, in fact, I'll, I'll chuck it in now because I might as well, which is from, because um, I want to answer it. Uh, Matthew Comden has said, did you manage GW Harrow? I did. Yeah, you managed a few, didn't you? Yes. So who, what have I, who have I managed? Where have I managed? They've all pretty much shut down. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Is that because of you? Or? Yeah. <laughs> so in Games Workshop's Infinite Wisdom, when I managed, when I passed my manager's course, when they had those boot camp, crazy boot camps that you were up there for a Oh, week. yeah, yeah. Was this using the marine file as well? Did you yeah, I think so. Yeah, and the Ten Commandments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they never left, did they? No. And then I, my first shop was Sutton, which was to get from... Where I lived to Sutton was a two and a half like hour journey. South London, right? South London, yeah. yeah. So two and a half hour journey there and two and a half hour journey back. Every day? day. Yeah. So that was my... <laughs> but the, So I did that for two weeks. But the manager of Richmond lived in Sutton. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like... Yeah. yeah. So luckily he had a bit of a pull. With the area manager and yeah. said, Look, let's swap, swap. <laughs> so, which was helpful. Um, and then I, I went from there to Richmond, and then Richmond, I managed South Kensington, mm. which was nice. That was, and then South Kensington, then back to Harrow. Yeah. I started off as a full timer at Harrow back in 95, yeah. My mate used to have marriage um, Hammersmith. Oh, what was it? Tim. Tim Hancorn. Oh, I don't know if been before or after your time. I don't know. No, because I did my manager's training with um, guy um, Jamie Thorne. Uh, because it, it was at Darling Road, the um, the first GW, mm. and then it moved up the onto the high street. And then that's, yeah, I worked in both of those. Yeah, so I've pretty much worked around most of the London stores yeah. at the time, yeah. Yeah, I did my, um, like, when I was a staff member, we had, like, the Marine Fire, and I did my manager training around about 2004. So it wasn't that long after, probably, when you left, because you left 2000, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I, sorry, Hello. I've just ignited my lightsaber. I do apologise. <laughs> uh, just pleased to see me. <laughs> <laughs> it's red. I'm <laughs> terribly sorry. <laughs> just struggles to control them. <laughs> yeah. It's a good job it's not double-edged, I was sort of saying. <laughs> Doggy lipstick. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> my, my mind immediately went there, but I kept quiet. <laughs> we, had, we had a case of that this morning because... Uh, I, I hate to turn doggy lips in there because it's so true. For the Red Rocky. We had a case of that this, <laughs> had a case that this morning because we walked the dog in the park and then this morning I became aware of that I thought, I think she's just come into season. Oh. Um, it's like on the lead, out the park, because she was getting too much unwanted attention. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Like, oh, dear. Yeah. So I could p- p- pass the expression <laughs> of a life okay, um, I actually found the, the the training that I used to get quite useful. Mm. Um, I, I know nowadays when we talk about the black book, it does seem quite courtish and stuff like that. But the training I had when I was a staff member and a, and a manager was quite practical, quite useful. And I do remember um, for a time it was the pinnacle of customer service training. Yep. Yep. And yep. other companies would, would look at Games yep. Workshop as a model. Um did you find that the same with, with your experiences or was it a little Yeah, bit for more? the manager's training, yeah. I think, to be honest, I think I was probably just too immature and just wanted to play with toy soldiers. Same. <laughs> and it's like, well, it sounds like a load of, you know, go make sure you, you talk to everyone that comes in the store. And it was like, yeah, but a lot of people just don't want to get be engaged when yeah, they come yeah. in. Jump and, on them. Uh, yeah. Did if, you have yeah, to do that, did you? Yeah. Uh. If, you had, if you had a new manager or something, make sure you talk to everyone. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, it was... The thing, I'm sorry, Jeff. No, no, saying? go. Just I was gonna say the thing I was used to get was uh, like you know it's regular. They've come in a hundred times. You've done that, yeah. And you get because we used to be one of the training stores. Where you get a new guy yeah. come in, and you'd be like, "Why aren't you talking to that customer?" Because that's Dave. He's been here for fifteen years. Yeah, he collects this. He collects this. He collects this. He only came in to get that book because we spoke about it last week. Yeah, we didn't go up and talk to him. <sighs> I know you're looking off a crib sheet, mate, but I know the customer, so it was always quite weird when you had to yeah, yeah, like, yeah. go and talk to someone for the sake of talking to, to please a guy that didn't know anything about what was going on at that moment in time. She used to wonder. Yeah, I was in there. Uh, I was in there last Monday, funny enough, and 
and bless them on Friday Lane. They are lovely, but it's like I, I know exactly what I came in for. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we should go in with a small piece of card that as they approach you, just hold up, it's got no written on it. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I know what it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you do many game stays? Cause yes, yeah, yeah. I did. Funny enough, I did. I was just thinking about this game day, must have been 97. And uh, I was walking around with the assistant manager of the Plaza store because it, it was such a prestigious store. It had two managers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, double manager. That sounds like a conflict of interest. Like <laughs> yeah. Lots of old <laughs> <doesn't it? laughs> yeah. And um, this kid came out, can I have your autograph? And I went, so I'm just a staff member. And he said, oh, yeah, because you sculpted that because of this, this very giant ended up in a white dwarf. Oh, cool. Just for the Plaza store. And yeah. there was a picture. And he goes, you, you made that giant? I was like, I did. Like, <laughs> Random chart. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Which, like, I was like, ooh. This but That's it, where it all began. Yeah. And then the other ones, you get put on a retail stand. Mm, I hate the retail stands. Yeah, but I just went, you just go, it's, uh, can I have a break? And then you just go look around the studio. No one would bother you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then go back up. And then I think one year I just got back from my lunch and someone went, go for your break now. Said, yep, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Genius. Yeah, they were, they were meant, I, I, the thing I used to hate about um, the big games day events was you'd have like uh, participation games going yeah. on. So each store would make like a four by four table. You'd yeah. Like a game, there'll be a theme or whatever. And you'd get like, a, like an, I guess like a pit master of the area and he'd be walking yeah. along like as a manager or whatever. Yeah, walking yeah. Along going, they're not as loud as that table. So they've got to be like, that table's loud and you, you need to be louder. Yeah. It's by the end of it, you're like, you're literally coughing up blood because yeah. you're shouting so much. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, you're having to shout war and stuff. It was it was weird. I hated that. So I just, yeah, never really got on board with like the over the top sort of yeah. enthusiasm. Oh, when I, because uh, I was a part timer at the Plaza store, 92, and I had an Ultramarines, an RTB01 Ultramarines Ooh. Army. I was dead pleased with. And I, they put it in the cabinet. And I went in the next day and it was like games day. And I was a customer, games day. And I was like, where's my army gone? Oh, we're taking it to games day. <laughs> Did you get a choice? <laughs> and I was like, huh? Yeah, yeah, it'll be, it's going to be used on the table. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, damn right. Like, yeah, so I just went, that's they're my figures. I'm taking them back. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is like... Rude. Because I, I was like painting up a... Like I had an empire army. No figure was allowed to touch another figure in the and you see people that are just like Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anxiety inducing, yeah. One one of my favourite moments in because as a manager you, you did recruitment, we used to have recruitment days and stuff, and you have like about ten, fifteen folks come in to, to, to look for a job. And they bring the figure cases and you have a look and you'd be like doing like one on ones. They'll be yeah. like group activities, but you do like one on one interviews and stuff. And like shows your models, talk about your models. This guy gets like a wash basket, like you know, like your little peg basket, linen basket thing, filled full of models to the top. And he just goes, Yeah, this is my army. <laughs> oh. And we were like, Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was just all, it was like, it wasn't even an army, it was just a bit. bit yeah, bits. yeah. It was like a bit box. It was bizarre. I was like, yeah, that's someone who doesn't care about <laughs> maintaining yeah. things. You, well, you spent so much time painting or converting and then just for people to, you know, or if they... Smash them up. Yeah, or, you know, they get their regiment and then obviously because it was rank and... Yeah. It would smash it into like <gasps> a tournament or something. You just go, Christ... It's like, Please it, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, it's that thing, isn't it? When you, you f or you can just feel bad for how they treat their own. Never yeah, mind how yeah. they want to yeah. treat yours. It's, you know, yeah, I've had a few yeah. people who treat them like as if they're actually like you know you just smash like, them together. Well, yeah, some people just treat them like they are literally just chess pieces. Don't yeah, they? yeah, you know, it's like you know, just throw it in a box at the end yeah. of the game, and that's you know. Yeah, you complain about the price or something, and then that's what you do with them. Yeah, so yeah. What's the? Well, did you see that one from um, Louise's? Um, she did a show about like um, Games Workshop sins of things. People oh yeah, had done. the confessions. Yeah, yeah. And did you see the, the the guy had been like had ordered jaw and the the tournament had ordered KFC and was just oh. and greasy fingers and was just moving his miniatures around. And then at the end of the I'm sorry, at the end of the game before <laughs> putting them in the box, he just licked, he just sucked them all. Clean oh. and put them back in the box. Oh. <laughs> it's the grimmest thing ever. <laughs> 
I mean, <laughs> a new full doggy lipstick was going to be bad. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to shame you, but I remember one of our gamers, one of our buddies in our gaming group, uh, we, we were playing uh, like a big fantasy game. And, you know, you have like packets of crisps and stuff. You're like, oh, do you want a crisp? Do you want a crisp? And he was like, oh, yeah, hang on a minute. I pulled in and no one touched that bag of crisps after all. And it's like, I'll move my own models, thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll move my own models. So he wipes their hands in their armpit. <laughs> I, was like, I am not touching them, Chris. What is not pretend is the other half the story. The guy was wearing a vest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Salty. Um, so, being at workshop, you've obviously experienced sci-fi and fantasy and stuff yes. like that. But obviously, a lot of the stuff you do is very historical based. Yeah. Do you sculpt? This is like leading into the the new thing. Do you sculpt anything um, fantasy based or have before? Oh, or has it all mainly might, just been historicals? It has mainly been historicals. Even my uh, fantasy army was Empire, which is pretty much the, Perry's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The so, best of fantasy armies. Fantasy yeah, armies, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Such a shame they got rid of that range. It's coming back, it's coming back. Yeah, and the Bretonians as well. Yeah, oh, oh. Someone said, uh, this This triggered me a little bit, because I've got a dark elf army, and it's like, because it's old world, it's just old. Yeah. They're not going to like the, the new world with like Lustre and... Uh, Nagaroth and stuff like that so the Dark Elves aren't having anything yet which makes me sad yeah I can't, I can't can't get my head around that Age of Sigma just it's just fancy I mean I like some of the design aesthetics and stuff uh, and I like the idea I can create what I want but it does personally miss a lot of the attachment that I used to have with yeah. the old world yeah and they, the new those new city is what they the Cities of Sigma dudes yeah they yeah. look good yeah. I like them yeah, but they're they're like they live on what plane, what world? Yeah, it's not that, a... again, that, that that's the thing where because yeah. I was, uh, I think it was a previous podcast where I was like, if you had more of a design aesthetic and structure. In fact, someone I was talking to the other day, like with with the, they made the Stormcast right, which is basically Space Marines in in the past. Yeah, Space yeah. Marine Knights, and you did these different iterations. You had like the Warrior Chamber, which were the first ones, which are really clunky, and I'm not as a fan of them whereas the newer ones the Thunderstrike look really yeah, nice really they're yeah. a bit more slime yeah. then you got these other aesthetics where they had what was called the um, Extremist Chamber which was like Stormcast with like dragony sculpted shoulder pads mm. riding like dragons and like big lizardy dragon monsters that feels like it should be a Stormcast faction in a certain realm as opposed yeah. to everyone has it and it's just made yeah. of different colours you know yeah. you get like your flavours of space marines yeah 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 that yeah. feels like a flavour like, yeah. of storm it should be like a space yeah. wolf thing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. then you've got the vanguard mm. ones which have all the bear skins on they've got like bear sculpted helmets and they've got like laxes and they have like like they look like hunters yeah. and again it's like the space wolves of yeah yeah yeah, yeah. stormcast it's like that should be a flavour now and then you know build upon that whereas it's just like yeah we've done the blue ones of these we've done the white ones of these we've done the black ones of these it's like nah. I don't like that. I think, no, I think it no, it just. Flavor. I think it's just because that's the period of Games Workshop I grew up in. Yeah, and that, so, that's. Yeah. I'm sure there's lots of people watching this going, you know, it's you're talking of the dark ages. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something out there for everyone, isn't it? And I think that was the biggest, my my, my biggest thing with, with Workshop is they destroyed it and started again where they could have like kept it going alongside I mean do you I, think no that's because there was a lot of people taking chunks out of them at the time weren't there oh yeah yeah so they just needed to refresh refresh and then put their mark on it because you had was that company in Spain that pretty much made it was old, Chapter House it was Chapter House no not something. Chapter House they had a metal miniatures company which was basically it looked like GW stuff oh. I can't remember what they were called now because I, I, I can think of Rackham which did confrontations yeah but that was really they're French aren't they they were French, and that that was really sort of quite high. Oh yeah, was, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're yeah, a fan yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. I was big yeah, into big confrontation. Into, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, the funny thing is, I can that um, that most recent uh, ogre that's walking around with the with yeah. the uh, yeah, yeah. They did like a turret, didn't they? Yeah, sitting yeah. on it. Yeah, but he's got a crow's nest on his back. Yeah. It's so the minute I looked at that, I thought, oh, Christ, that looks like confrontation. Yeah, well, they do have a lot of the confrontation sculptors. Yeah, I'm not surprised because <laughs> <they, 'cause laughs> their cool. stuff was really. <laughs> Yeah. Some competition. Really high end. High end. Yeah. A fantasy at its absolute. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? To the point where some of it, like they had a race in it that were, um, they had a race in it that were, uh, like some mad scientist underground had been like uh, adapting humans and other creatures into becoming, and they were like biomechanical to the point that you looked at them. If you looked at them solitarily, you go, well, that's a science fiction range. But, uh, okay. but in actual fact, it, it was part of this fantasy range. But so they really pushed fantasy to its limits like even like um their equivalent of like a they had like a chaos i don't know like a chaos dwarf he would be i suppose 
dressed like a in like a, like a surgeon's gear with like mad hair and goggles, but then the bottom half of his belt, he was just bio, was just mechanical spider legs, you know. So it really pushed that side yeah, of it. Yeah. But yeah, I love the confrontation range, and so sad they shot themselves in the foot with it. But you know, yeah, the pre paints wasn't it? Yeah, they went. Yeah, 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 we'll never do plastics, and then within a year they done not only they done plastics, but we pre painted them for you. And you think it's so ridiculous because it was such a painter's range. Yeah. yeah, you know, but yeah, terribly sad. So yeah, to, am I? Have I done? Fan- well, I'm just embarking with Andy Hobday because we've done the Baron's War stuff together. Yeah, yeah. So the the Baron's War is sort of a, a combination between me and Andy Hobday. He does all the intelligent stuff, and I do all of the. <laughs> he's the brains. I'm the brawn. <laughs> um, so we've done. It's a, a partnership, um, and then it's sort of sold through Footsaw Miniatures, mm. and. Uh, we did the first one that went really well mm. and then we did the second one and while it was going on I was like oh, I could do some Robin Hood figures but they're, but maybe people just think oh you're doing Robin Hood that's a bit fantasy you know you're sort of muddy in the waters and you're going you no know, people really liked them and you know yeah yeah. so the third one that we'd... Kevin Costner documentary was great yeah yeah it was great yeah <laughs> I haven't done Morgan Freeman yet yeah. <laughs> and then the third one we we based it on sort of the Robin Hood, the death and taxes, which was mm. sort of a, a Robin Hood type. And it's like, these figures would work really well in sort of a fantasy setting. And we um, we have a guy in Germany, Daniel, who is, is it MVH painting? Oh, I don't know. No, you, you oh, mentioned yes, it. yes, yes, the yeah, yeah. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I always want to say HMV, but, but it's... Uh, uh, I've, uh, I've probably got it really wrong. It's HMVM. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they do a lot of um, Lord of the Rings painting. Yeah. Really nice photography. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah I've seen some yeah, of it. Yeah, since some it. fantasy stuff. Well, they? he's... Yeah, he's done all of our uh, war game... He's done all of our Baron's War stuff. Yeah. And he's put them into absolutely atmospherical, you know, really fantastic pictures. And he was going, oh, these would make really good sort of fancy figures. And then that just got me and Andy's mind working away. So we're, we're going to embark on a, a fantasy range. Nice. Under the brand Hobday and Hicks. Hobday and Hicks, that's like a Should crime Hicks and Hobday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you solve crime in the afternoon as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a couple of old ladies. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to, we're, it's all going to be very grounded in um, uh, sort of a, a kind of grimy it's not going to be high fantasy at all mm. and uh daniel's posted a picture of the orcs that we've done yeah yeah, I, yeah. Saw those. I didn't realize that that's what the project was that's yeah 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 so that that's photo. yeah that's um and i brought a few for you to have a look at today so they're um it's all going to be very grounded um and it really sort of gritty as well mm. um and we've got some great ideas um yeah so that this is the next hoping to have it out done and dusted by the end of the year. So if I've got an existing Baron's War war band, that'll fit perfectly into. Yep. Yeah, yeah, into it's this. all going to fit in size wise. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, yeah. yeah so um, Andy's, I think he's going to upload. Um, he's been to an event and he's show. You know, they've play tested the the uh, magic, um, rules. It's not all going to be like fireball. Fireball. Well, there'll be a bit of that, but it won't be death and it won't be the be all end all so it'll yeah, be yeah. very grounded in the baron's war sort of um rules that we have already that andy's done uh yeah so it's all it's all going to be hand sculpted again so we're that's the the real grittiness that we're going to go for yeah well i'll take some photos after and pop them yeah up. please i'd love um, yeah yeah, but I've, I've I've seen that picture now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I, I just didn't connect the dots. Yeah. But yeah, that's a really nice photo. And yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Really, really good-looking orcs. They're all chimney orcs, aren't they? They are orcs. Yeah, yeah. but they're um, they're all going to have bits of. Um, with the sort of the idea is that they get their um, their sort of magic through, um, sort of the demise of others. Mm. A bit like um, you know, like Romans, where they would look at in entrails for omens and stuff like that but they'd sort of take that to the next level of being able to cast uh, maybe, and then yeah, sort of yeah. like wear, wear wear trophies as a a, a sort of a protection yeah and that's that's the kind of aesthetic we're going to go for that sounds quite cool actually. yeah yeah I like that. I've got i've got the uh, bunch of baron's war stuff that you kindly sent to me so thank I'm you get those painted up yeah as well. no that was andy sent that to you oh fantastic. Yeah, yeah 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 so i've got yeah, some uh 
some some things to keep me going. But it, I've always liked the concept of that. And my, uh, one of my buddies from workshop, uh, James, um, he um, sent me a photo of like a bunch of Templars he was doing. Mm-hmm. And he just did a little because he's a really good photographer at office, and he, he just did a load of these. Uh, I guess the 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 black field with a white cross, which I always want to see Knights of St. John, but I'm not sure if that's... Blackfield right. white cross, that is the Knights... I'm probably just made yeah. a real massive faux pas now. He's, he, they're Templars. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're of an order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're an order. Yeah. Knightly but order. He, he just did a little, little setup. He's painting like a hand flum. He just like had a little background of um, this TV with some desert and he just sprinkled yeah. some sand on it. Oh. It looks so good, the photo does. He was like, oh, you know, you'll have to get into this. And I'm a big fan of the old game Cry Havoc. Yeah, yeah, know, well, that, that's... That is literally where Andy, so the inspiration yeah. came from, was Cry Havoc. Because, to be honest, I'm not that much of a gamer. I really don't have time. And there's not many people, well, there's nobody around where I live that play games. Yeah. Um, and I just, I, I have more fun just making sculpting yeah. and not even painting. It's just that's where my yeah, yeah. my hobby satisfaction comes from. Uh, yeah, and, and Andy, that's Cry Havoc was his... But the, those Barons Wars, it was just, we did one, and they were like, next time we could do this, we yeah, could do yeah. that, and it would be great if we have or we have a village that's, you know, just populated by, you know, cat weasel. <laughs> 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 one for the kids. Yeah, I was just like, oh, we need a, somebody mad that lives in this. Yeah, so yeah. we just, and then build up stories. I think that's what I enjoy is, like, yeah. building up. But even then, you can go into like like the Game of Thrones territory and just have like households and bannermen and like different like coats of arms and stuff. And just you know, yeah. you don't even have to have like like weird magic and stuff. It could nope. just be like these two factions are at each other's throats and made up realm. Yep. Or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. That's what I love about that kind of rule system where you can you can do what you want with it. Yeah, that, that's that, that's exactly you know we we wanted something which is it's not governed by existing law mm. or anything. We can just make what we want and. F- and just the enthusiasm will hopefully, well, will come up through, you know, what we produce. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mega. Should we jump on to some patron questions? Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Have you got them on your phone already? Oh, I've got them already. Fired up. So Harry Bow, Harry Bow, not related to any <laughs> kind of sweet treat, uh, is asking the tough questions of the show, which is Marmite, yes or no? No. Okay, simple. Good. No. Uh, Wife loves it. Luckily, my daughter I, does not. Uh, we're the flip in our house, it's only me. That really, does. I like it. No yeah. one else does. No. Yeah, no. wife, wife, and Charlie not not fans. Me, big fan. I dropped a knife today with it on, and the dog came running over. And even the dog went, oh. <laughs> get off, get off. <laughs> Anything that's just the scrapings at the bottom of a beer production. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, it doesn't taste so good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think if you can start your morning on beer and end it on beer, surely that's yeah, not yeah, a bad yeah. way to go. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I've point. got a question for yeah. you, quick, Jeff. Then because uh, cool. I, I was foxed by this. I like peanut butter. Mm-hmm. I like marmite. I do not like Marmite peanut butter. Oh, see, I don't like peanut butter. And it's either. like that, isn't it? It's some things, isn't it? That it's Should too much of crossing the yeah. streams, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it? You know? No, and it's, uh, I, like, I, I'm I'm spent like too much time thinking if they... Should it be done? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Could it be done? Yeah. I suppose it should it be done. I don't mind But it. my wife has Marmite as a part of her hangover cure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can really? see that. Yeah, yeah, because mm. it's meant to sort of set with a stomach. I suppose it is quite goopy. Yeah. yeah, marmite, um, marmite uh, into into hotly buttered crumpets is, mm. the, is the way forward. Oh, interesting! Uh, hotly buttered crumpets. Yes. Mm. You ruined two yeah. things in one day: <laughs> <laughs> so butter and crumpets. You need to get some ASMR of just oh, Jeff going hotly buttered crumpets. Worst thing I've ever heard. Yeah, um, is from a friend of ours who's a, who is a PT, and she suggested baked beans on crumpets. Oh, I've had baked beans. I've had baked beans. On <laughs> They're talking about PT. I did the. Um, I used to know somebody who came into the shop for haircuts, and he um, he was like mega CrossFit yeah. guy, you know. And um, because obviously he's filling up on protein and fats all the time because of how much, and um, whitens his coffee with butter. Oh really? Oh, yeah. I watched. There was a guy yeah. who did. Oh, I'd want to be sick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, whitens his coffee with butter. There was a guy who did. Um, it was a program of discovery, and he ran round, he ran up the length of the UK, mm. swam round the whole of it. Oh, I think I oh, some I ginger yeah. hairy bloke, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was just going, and he had like ordered like a shepherd's bite, and he was just throwing butter into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, just all just the calories. To, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 amazing. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Was it? I was it a few years ago? He swam around. 
there was a chap that swam around yeah. the UK. Yeah, that was he, part of his. Yeah, and he, he swallowed so much seawater that like he got a nickname Rhino Tongue because <laughs> all of his tongue had just like he could just pull it. chunks of it off. Whoa. Oh, oh grim, yeah, grim. it was like really grim. Oh, yeah. you know, talking about mixing things, we used to have um, we we had a, a, an army officer who'd done his two years attachment with the SAS. And um, because he wasn't prepared to give his commission up, he has to come back after a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And um, I I was friends with a uh, with a female officer who found obviously being attached to an infantry regiment just bizarre anyway. And she says he comes in and obviously being the officers mess, they eat in courses. And she says it's like he's got somewhere else important to be as he comes in and he just tips his soup over his dinner. And then just eats all, just gets up and leaves. Does he not top it off with like the cake as well? Yeah, just just literally apparently just pours his soup like a gravy all over whatever he's eating and just nails it. There's one just efficient, just yeah. 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 in and out. SS in and out before the echo yeah, phase. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay. I had uh, I ran out of bread, so I recently had a fried egg on a crumpet, and that was all right. Okay, I, mm. I like crumpets mixing them up with stuff. Brown sauce on mine. Oh, oh. So, mm. <laughs> so you're talking about that thing of things that you like being mixed it's like you know when people go oh I always have like red sauce on a Sunday dinner I always think you'd be taking on side and shot oh yeah I've got my mate <laughs> chasing stream my mate no, well, it's, well, it's, it's, well, it's, well, it's, you're, you're literally breaking the bounds of British tradition I would say yeah. it's taken out and shot it's almost as traitorous I would oh, say t- yeah but is there not like a north-south divide here what's acceptable when it comes no, to no that should never be acceptable on either <laughs> from the south that's not acceptable is it no mate Jesse Singh would everywhere we'd go he would take his own Heinz tomato sauce I love Heinz tomato sauce yeah but even sauce. like to his mum's if she'd done a milk oh, wow. <laughs> oh wow I'd he'd be disowned I think yeah. they should be a, they should reserve a tower at London at the Tower of London yeah, for yeah. people who put red sauce on Sunday dinners oh instead of gravy instead yeah, instead, yeah instead, no, I think or just had in it general on, with the gravy yeah oh that's oh oh, that, oh that's no, grim well, mm. no 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 so get please get us your questions PG. yeah yeah, yeah. it's that's gonna be another joke. food related one i'm afraid i'll have half the uh, nation <laughs> shot in this race <laughs> <laughs> we'll get past the food ones and we'll go into like the nitty-gritty <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, to mix it up what's your least favorite cheese this is from alex cope or oh, plastic cheese plastic. oh yeah 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 yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Like dairy like, kind of thing. oh dairy no dairy triangles never got on with them <laughs> Never, mini baby bell. Oh yeah, that would do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of plasticky stuff. The yeah. always great thing with baby bell is we always catch the kids with it. Is every year is the little we uh, just at Christmas we put we put I put come in with my hands with with like a load of them in and they go shh and they go what and they go baby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, I'm gonna have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> baby Jesus. <laughs> Good. It's a dad joke of everything. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I had a friend that used to have them every lunch at school and he used to, you know, the, the wax thing. Yeah, he used yeah. to constantly, like, make stuff out of the wax. Yeah, and, like, yeah. warm up in his yeah. hands and, like, scoop little things. Just stick them around school. See, that, that I did, did, uh, if there's anything on the table, if it's, like, blue tack or anything. It's yeah, just... uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff makes dice. If you see oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I make blue tack dice is my thing. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. <laughs> we, were, we used to do a show at, um, in Italy... And our best friends came with us because what we used to do is uh, it was on Ryanair, and you uh, you used to just be able to not have to pay for your luggage. So you've got like 20 kilos. So you put all your stock in, you take all your clothes in a carry all, and we'd stay in this lovely ho- um, town in Italy. And they'd put a show on, and like my best friend, a couple came with us, and Sally was sat next to me at the show. I think Kerry was still in bed with a hangover. And uh, uh, my best mate Darren didn't want to come out, so she was just there making something out of my putty because I was just making figures while selling. And then uh, Black comes out. Oh, what are you sculpting? In broken English, she went a pizza. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is expecting something yeah, more gamey. Yeah, yeah. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but you know, the soldier got to eat. They have, yeah. yeah <laughs> right, we have her fourth. This looks like a big one, so I'll, I'll work oh, okay. into it. Hey, Paul. Thanks for coming to our favourite hobby talk format. Cool. Cheers, 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 her fourth. Five percent of post. Uh, <laughs> what is your favourite miniature scale for gaming, not painting? Uh, but obviously, we now know you don't do much gaming. So. No, no, I don't actually. 
So, uh, I'm just, uh, it's kind of rude the question, really, hasn't it? I'll carry on. See if there's well, more. no, I, I love, I do love looking at looking at games. And yeah, then, yeah. I just, I think I get a lot of pleasure from seeing what people do with what I make. So that's like that's where I get sort of the enthusiasm. So it's definitely twenty eights because yeah. that's what I appreciate, and it's it was the scale of Games Workshop when I started. Yeah, yeah. I remember you saying like you you got like a lot of people saying you, know, you should be doing twenty mil, but that was like Airfix scale. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it's because yeah. back then everyone had yeah. like Matchbox Airfix kits. Yeah. Is it Zvezda that do like the uh, the little they, twenty they, mil? They do fifteen, I think. They oh, tried, did they do fifteen? I think they tried to do their own, oh, right. and then you had Battlefront, didn't you? But Battlefront didn't really come into. I think that's quite a little bit later on, isn't it? Yeah, and they're about fifteens. Yeah. They're fifteens, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and so yeah, so why, why six? Um, so, what is your favourite miniature scale for gaming? Not painting, and why is six millimetre and fifty millimetre so much behind on the mass market? Is it? Do you know why fifteen mil? Six, it's just because it's small and people don't like painting small, small details. Yeah, I do do love the AB Napoleonics. Yeah. They're amazing. Yeah. And then Gary, I've heard that story, you know, Gary Morley was talking about, he he sculpts, because mm. the uh, Paula Empress knows the sculpts really well, AB Miniatures. And this guy sculpts on the plate. Yeah, yeah, into yeah, 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 he does, yeah. It's crazy. His World War II stuff's amazing. Ah. Yeah, AB World War II is just outstanding. Yeah, talk, he's just talking about like 28mm figures yeah. being um, like for large scale things like Waterloo, it just doesn't make sense. So, because yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I obviously do like Waterloo and stuff with the things I do with Duncan, but yeah. I, I yeah, it, it, yeah, it'd be nice to see sort of a 28mm frontage, but maybe with 6mm figures because you get an idea more mm. of like that. Um, what's the diorama at the National Army Museum? Oh, is that the one the Perrys have done? No, it's uh, Siborn. Cyborn. It was done just after the battle, so he got round and he asked all of the the generals where they were, mm. and it's this huge diorama that he made, and it's got its own room in the National Army Museum. It's amazing. I need to check that. And out. apparently Wellington saw it, and then the Prussians were there, like depicted on the diorama. He's like, no, no, just move those over. <laughs> it's not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, if you've never seen it, it's no, just no. like. Oh, can we push them around, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Gunwitch is asking, what are your favourite ancients? Anything without skin shirt, I imagine. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did Romans... I did Romans for Warlord Games. Hmm. Um, I, I say I did Romans. I did, like, their first... the metal bits that went with their plastics because their Romans were the first that they did. Um, yeah, so I did a lot of their metal figures to go with those. So yeah, Romans probably. Yeah. It's a uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose yeah, yeah. And you've got like different timelines that you can identify yeah, with as well, yeah. like late Romans. Or... Did Romans upgrade like clone troopers? Like every war, it was like a slightly different. Uh... I don't know if they got worse or better. I don't know. They some yeah, of that mid. That's like... a Mark II helmet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they did because when they because I remember what was it that time watch that the Perrys had? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That was like oh, I want twenty eight mil Romans now. Yeah. Um, they upgraded all their armour, didn't they, for the Dacian campaign? Mm. They put in extra armour bits. Oh, right. Yeah. And then, like, armoured arms, didn't they? Because they, the Dacians had those two handed curved. Oh, was that the Falchion style? Thing? Not Falchion. I know which one you mean. I can't remember. Yeah. Now, but, but it's like a, a scythe, double handed. So, so they, they had to build up extra armour. To oh. take that on, yeah, and also as well with the Romans as well, some of their um, armor and uniform reflected where the men yeah, have been yeah, recruited yeah. from in the yeah. world as well. So they would, yeah. you know, if they went, oh, these guys in this particular part of the world are phenomenal at being archers. Yeah, when they came in, the helmets would reflect where they were from, not the yeah. one, not oh, the armor of cool. the Roman Empire. Yeah. Gangs, I've done a lot of figures for Gangs of Rome as well. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, obviously Romans. I love doing Romans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Romans are cool. Gladiators, you're interesting. Like I've done Gladiators for Brigade Games. Yeah yeah, 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 that was quite interesting. That was actually the year my daughter was born. Yeah, yeah. So I was. I remember, I worked on a what paint some stuff for a book because when Warhammer did War Historicals, they were doing Ooh. a Colosseum game. Yeah, and I worked with Ian Strickland, and he was getting that and I was so excited for it and then it just died a death oh, yeah. straight after G-Dubs did historicals yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. War, Warhammer historicals I went to because that's what sort of, yeah <laughs> you could even have 
Warhammer Cowboy game. Yep. Which yeah, I played Old it. West. Yeah. And non GW wow. models in the hall. Yeah, yeah non GW. No, went... Yeah, because it was miniatures yeah. agnostic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've got signed Chariot Wars by the Perrys. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because they did um, Old West to start off with, didn't they? And then they moved on to like the Alamo and the Mexican War stuff. Yeah. And then I remember them doing World War One, and Dave and Ali did a lot of the because they had Great War miniatures. Yeah, still have Great War miniatures. And then yeah, there was loads of other stuff. There was uh, Waterloo, uh, so I got some stuff in the Waterloo book um, that the Perrys and Jervis Johnson wrote. Mm. Um, and then yeah, they did Trafalgar as well. I think they did yeah, Trafalgar, yeah. And then they just pulled a plug on it. Yeah, didn't they? It was, um, Rob Broom was like yeah, yeah, Rob Broom, yeah, no, no, Rob quite well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, pulled the plug on it. And I don't know if it was just like a change of mindset, but probably didn't like people coming in with non games workshop figures into the hall. Yeah, I guess I it was like, great. Because a lot of it was the Lord of the Rings rule system. Yep. Oh, was it? Yeah, which is why I say And we all know PG hates the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is basically the same rule system for Warhamster, wasn't it? Warmaster. Warmaster. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I love Warmaster. Yeah. Uh, Warmaster uses, uses black powder. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah black yeah, powder yeah. rule system, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, a few people in the comments in the past have gone, yeah, but Black Powder is just War Master. It's like, yeah, we know, because it's yeah. a great rule system. <laughs> uh, it's one of the only games I could get my head round. Yeah. <laughs> that was the other reason I don't game much, is because I'm absolutely diabolical. <laughs> Same. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> you I, me both, but it doesn't, doesn't stop me keep going out there <laughs> and losing game after game. Yeah, yeah I'd, go to, I'd go to tournaments. I did tournaments for a while, because there's like a group of four of us that used to go to tournaments. And then I I'd lose interest halfway through. <laughs> and then especially if there's someone who's desperate to win. It's yeah. like, so what I start doing with my groups of mates now is I have one rule system that I try and learn and understand, yeah. which is Warcry for me. Yeah. Um, and I suppose like Middle Earth as well, because it's quite easy to get into rule system. And then like Duncan will be like going, oh, I've got Song of Ice and Fire. I'm like, you tell me what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah, I'll drink beer and eat some crisps. You just, just tell me, me when to yeah, roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't mind that. And it's like a dynamic that we're kind of used to. Whereas he, he pr- builds his war, his armies and stuff. Like, yeah. oh, I've got these two forces. I've got like the Lannisters versus the Starks. And I'm like, cool. I've got these war bands you can play with. So it's, it's our dynamic now. About we, like Steve's the same. He, he wants to get into Fallout, and like, I want to do Skyrim. Oh, okay. I'm happy to paint so many, so yeah, many paint games now. So yeah, much yeah. Stuff. It's, it's good. I, you know, back in the day when I was young, it was like not much at all. No. Hey. Now, every everyone's at it. Uh, Dave, just Dave, is Dave. asking, what are your favourite and least favourite miniature sculpts you've made? My least favourite, I don't know. But least, I think I could. Well, probably the first ones because they're not up to what I would want them to be now. If you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But not that I don't don't like them. Yeah. Um, because I think you put in so much, you have to sort of really get infused about them. Otherwise, it takes forever to do it. Yeah. Because if you're not, if you're not interested in the period and you're not infused about sculpting that figure, it's going to take forever to do. Yeah. So, um, favorite. Oh. So, like Bob Naismith had the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> There's been many. There's loads. So you just go. I think once I've made them and I'm like, and they go off and then they get, because a lot of time I take photos to say, oh, I've done the work, yeah. here's the invoice, can I have my money? And then you see people, you put them up as like, this is what's coming out. It's like, yeah, no, yeah. that's just a quick photo. Uh, yeah, say yeah, I've yeah. done the work. I think it's like your is, your, is it sort of then to some degree, is your favourite always the next ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always, what's the the figure that you're most infused about making that you know excited about yeah the ones that I've got to do next yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so exactly. it's always you know if I'm excited about sculpting anything I'm in bed like oh just having a look what can photos I need to look at doing that you know need this or especially doing the World War Two stuff for Empress miniatures just going over and over photos and going right that'll make a great pose yeah that needs to be done yeah it's all of that yeah cool. i think some of the world war ii stuff i've done for empress is my favorite yeah because yeah. doing the stuff for bolt action and then not getting to do it again yeah that was a bit of a bone of contention but then it got, the avenue got opened up again with uh empress miniatures and i could just really put it yeah yeah get suppose, behind yeah. it again get, get to Re- revisit things yeah 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 that was a yeah that was a good period of time 
<laughs> Joe Rogers, <laughs> random. Uh, do you like the Age of Empires computer PC series? And if so, which one is your favourite? It's quite a classic old game, to be fair, it's, if you ever played it. Never played uh, it. Age of Empires 2. Age of Empires That's my favourite. Yeah, you my put favorite. the cheats in and you get the little robot man and the. you can get uh, like a Shelby, is it a Cobra? Like the car. Oh, right. And, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to build my pyramid and my shrine to my god and I'm going to mine some gold and here's my car that's got <laughs> guns. <laughs> uh, and that's why it's my favourite. It's always weird because yeah. you have like different advanced levels. All I remember is the uh, the person that did the woodcutting would go chopper. <laughs> the person that did like all the berry collecting would go gatherer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you clicked on them. I, I, don't been, know, I yeah. really remember that. <laughs> Sorry to say, I've never got, got on with computer games. It's fine. It's not for no, everyone. No. Not for everyone. Uh... I'm Captain Analog. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why you probably prefer physical sculpture as opposed yeah, to yeah, digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, Stephen Dyer, what are your f- thoughts on details on miniatures? Less Is less more? Oh, um, depends. So That's a good question, Steve. The, the latest GW stuff, I do love, but I think I've got the... Um, Mate Simon, that I started bolt action with, mm. donated to me the to try and get me to actually do a kill team force. Was the Krieg oh, Imperial Cult? Yeah. yeah, and they're great, but they're all sort of and like the new Cadians, they're all off doing different things. Yeah, yeah. And I loved you know all the old Perry stuff, which actually looked like it was a cohesive unit, and then if it because I'm. Playing game, it was actually more displaying having a collection. It looks so much nicer together yeah. than sort of all in action poses. So, yeah, I'm definitely... It's a weird combination that I fall right in the middle of that, is that sometimes, like, when I start a box of, like, uh, of generally, like, if I'm making Marines from a Sun, I'll be disappointed that there isn't more of them just looking down the sides of the balls yeah. and firing it. yeah. And then also I immediately go, oh, look at this one who's pulling the pin out of a hand grenade. And I get yeah. quite excited by the ones who are doing weird stuff. Yeah. But then I always feel that the the boxes aren't balanced enough. They should be just 50% of a 10-man box should just be firing yeah. a gun in the shoulder or from the hip. And a lot of the time it's like, oh, he's looking over there or he's checking an specs, or yeah. he's getting a phone call on his wrist. Or <laughs> yeah. he's doing. Yeah. And I love all that. Because, you know, real war, lots of that sort of stuff is going on. People are having to do things all the time, you know, especially 21st century soldiers now where at one point in time one man carried a radio and the the senior guy answered it. Everyone has a radio. Everyone's doing something else as well. But I do sometimes think you're right that when you look at a box that there's too many people just doing other things. And the worst of it is I'm a sucker for them having to build them Mm, when I know that I shouldn't. Because when I I did my Ultramarine Army... Well, over 30 years ago those were the, the holding a grenade or throwing a grenade those were the bits that you could do yourself yeah yeah. yeah. so you yeah. could put that character in yeah. but that it seems that option is now taken yeah, away from you get a choice. that is one of the builds and that's yeah. It. yeah so I think there's that creativity that storytelling of your own force is sort of taken away a little bit yeah, yeah. Um, so I've, I've got a it might be a contentious subject. Uh, you can disagree in the comments if you wish to. My favourite kill team set is the Sisters of Battle one, the Novitiates, because they give you the option to make them all with rifles, ah, uh, or with pistol and sword, or all of the specialists, which I really like. And they're not superly detailed. They have like a belt, yeah. a pouch, and you can add a pistol if you want to. And that's it, yeah. Uh, and I like that set for that alone. If I want to go a bit more in depth and do some cool conversions, extra mm. stuff, I can add that if I want to. The thing with the Death Court Cree, which really annoys me, when I can't be bothered to paint Napoleonic details, I buy great coat models. Yeah. Because they've got a great coat on them. Yeah. Death Court Cree, get the great coat, but then they put everything on top, top of, of it. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell us the fact that one of the miniatures in it has got medals, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Just, At least you can stick them on. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can decide whether he's been brave enough or not. But the Forge World Death Creek, I thought that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a lovely And who are those... The like the airborne, oh, oh, the I, drop troops. oh I introduced Pat to them. They were mate they were, with a bullpup, yeah, yes, rifle. yeah, yeah, yeah. I all about the yeah, bullpup, yeah. The, the, all I liked with them was that, um, if they were heavy weapons, the crates that the weapon had landed, it had, had come down on the uh, yeah. on the the, the 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 thrusters had brought them down on, and so you had like guys firing 
a light looking version of a heavy bolt yeah, on yeah, the yeah. crate it had landed yeah, in and yeah. using that as a as a firing platform. I love that range. I, I can't believe why they haven't resurrected that. Well, apparently it was just, and you know better than me, don't you, is that it's, if it, Forge World, if it just doesn't sell, they cut it, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, but right. as a, just as a, a, a squad. Well, the annoying thing was is they got rid of them, but you can still buy Elysian Green at the time. <laughs> Yeah, and named after they're them. still like featuring like the the books as a planet with yeah. like background stuff. So you know they still exist. It, yeah, it's, it's it's they had a buggy, a six yeah. wheel. Yeah, yeah, they did. Really yeah. cool yeah, as well. Like it was yeah. it was all cohesive. It yeah, all... they had. A, it was the first time they'd, I'd ever seen Games Workshop had done a, a sniper line on the floor on a half roll, trying to get into a pouch to get another mag out. It was, oh, I remember you yeah, saying yeah, that. Really, somebody everything that... had to buy pop because yeah. military modelers were scooped in those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so they knew their th- their stuff. Yeah, uh, Ian Michael Taylor, Tyler. Sorry, uh, I love the Baron's War figures that Paul did. He uh, if he could spec- uh, spectate one battle from history, which would it be? Oh, Ooh. that's a question. Oh. Spectate one battle. You only get one. Probably something like Waterloo. The same. Yeah. I think most people probably yeah, watch yeah, Waterloo. Something like that. Or Just so watch the French get a good old thrashing. Is it uh, the break? Is the break of the squares winter. at Salamanca? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, there's um, the bit before Waterloo is uh, Quatre Bras where the yeah. Black Watch get broken, but they don't. Which they don't get hammered. Well, they get hammered. But they no, it's, it's not. It's, it's, it's not, not a Black Watch. Watch. No, one of the one of the regiments loses its colours, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I actually want to see uh, the Duke of Brunswick just walking around with his pipe and then just getting shot because he, <laughs> he walked in front of all his troops <laughs> to, 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 to keep him inspired because most of them like really like uh, young and fresh and they just yeah. get shot, doesn't he? Oh, oh, by his own men? No, or? by the French. Oh, right. shoot him. Yeah, I think I mean, some fair enough. Well, I mean, he's right in front. Yeah. <laughs> or something mad like Kursk, just the amount of oh, t- fear. Yeah. Just to show how fast, you don't realise how fast those battlefields are. and yeah. 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 yeah, how many tanks was like? There's a lot of revision, revisionist history now because mm. they're saying that it wasn't a, a it's heavier defeat. Oh, really? It? Yeah, yeah. It's because yeah. the because the the history has been very written by. Yeah, I, I can't remember it's, what battle it was. Was it? I because obviously it used to be that thing, didn't he? Where if if French noble noblemen being knights fought peasants on foot um it was one-way combat so even though they were the opposite side they weren't allowed to fight back okay. you weren't allowed to fight uh you weren't for you weren't allowed to strike a nobleman so even in those like like Agincourt, which might be the battle that it changed was like at the end of the day if you'd captured a french knight you had to send him home at the end of the day when you'd <laughs> off, go home yeah. and because of the nobility outranked nationality Especially because yeah. a lot of the time these guys were cousins and stuff. Yeah. And I think it was Henry V when he went, all better off, drag him off the yeah. horse, kill him. Yeah, and yeah. I thought, I'd love to have been there on the day yeah. of the first French night one. What the hell's that? Why am I suddenly on the floor? <laughs> yeah. Why, yeah, why am I yeah, suddenly on the floor? Cross. This coming through my eye slit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a terrible, gory thought, but I'd just yeah. love to have just seen the boat with the first one went off a horse and the other, the other knights went, I got a bit what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, you're not allowed to kill me. <laughs> well, yeah. You're, yeah. you're, you're poor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's wild. Excuse me, can you have a word with your man? He should be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like that later, on, wasn't it? It was like in the Second World War out in North Africa. They used to just like phone up when they'd like fight each other in tank battles yeah. during the day. And then these at the end of the day, they count everyone up and they go, um, Ensign, Ensign Smith hasn't returned. And they would just phone the Germans and go, yeah. have you got Ensign Smith? And go, yeah, we have him. Is he okay? Yes, he's fine. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, was that, oh, was that why it was the Gentleman's, the Gentleman's War? War? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I'm learning, learning. As uh, every day is a school day. Every day is a school day. <laughs> Sharpie. As more uh, computer-based sculpting techniques become the norm for com- companies and individuals with the rise of 3D printing, do you find this leads to the loss of skills in using traditional mediums? Are there techniques that you do that you had to master that become obsolete as a result of this shift into the digital format? Or are you a traditional medium sculptor through and through? Which we Oh, yeah, yeah, already. traditional through and through, yeah. But I suppose the other question is, do you think there's a danger that people will lose some of that skill set? Yeah, but then, you know, I'm sure it will, uh, at another time it will I have a renaissance, else evolve. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I mean, vinyl's still a thing, isn't it? For yeah, record, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Mullets are back. 
Mullets. Yeah, mullets yeah. are back. Oh, I, saw, I saw some of some of my first ones out in the wild the other day. <laughs> what yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, they've been out. Oh, I've been Mate. seeing them. I think this university is like Mullet Central. Yeah, yeah. Don't know, it's wild. Rugby, and then you get all like the kids from the Cotswolds <laughs> come over, and it's just Mullet City. Do they oh, all yeah. ride in like 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 flatbed the trucks? Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like I remember growing up singing Dixie, um, and they're going like, "Wow, mullets! They didn't age well." And I thought that was like a universal thing. Oh no! That you know this thing of the the Cotswolds, the posh kids, they do it. It's sort of like oh, ironic. No, they, it's like ironic mullets. No, no, they are these are these the yeah, yeah these are the uh, the the earthy types. Yeah. <laughs> I'm officially old now because it's like well, the climate yeah. sense is Look, looking at the oh, 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 youth today. Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. want to be at the wrong end of forty still playing rugby against <laughs> kids. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jack Bellaby, also known as War Daddy Miniatures, is saying, would love to see you do some more Fauschenjäger models for Empress Miniatures. Any plans? Would love to see you do some Fauschenjäger models yeah, yeah. Um, for Empress Miniatures. Any plans? Uh, yes, but we've got to get through... Everything else. Everything else. <laughs> well, we've done... We've just done a Kickstarter for British Airborne uh, Sweet. Arnhem. So that that's going to keep going. Hopefully we... Yeah, it's just all the thing. Oh, I'd love to do this, I'd love to do that. Yeah. You've just got to try are and you, stay focused. Are you doing the mini most bikes for the airborne? Um, possibly next. Oh, fantastic. Um, I mean, it's, when you say about digital, you know, I, w- I will work with one of the guys who does stuff for Empress, and he did um, one of the hand carts. He's oh, a yeah. digital sculptor. Mm. So, you know, I'm not saying it's not something. Well, they can blend, can't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It just blends, you know, the mediums. If you had like three D, three D bike, but three D sculpted bike, but yeah. you know, I mean, it's still the the process, you know, from getting it from the sculpt into the the mold is still the same. You know how it's produced is still the same. Yeah. It's just how it's sculpted yeah. before it gets it molded. Really, mm. my, my first um, like. Not foray into twenty eight mil because we used to use like a lot of airfix stuff. Me and my dad did. I used to play a game called Rapid Fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we used to build up stuff using a lot of uh, the, lot of the airfix Revel, yeah. the Atelier, area, what they are. Um, and I got some. I think it was Foundry did them. The uh, Falsch Yeah. Media. Um, and I, I really liked painting them because because it was early war. I did, which was like almost like the. Air, Air Force bluey yeah. grey kind of helmet and trousers, and then they had that lovely smock yeah. camo. Um, just really enjoyed painting those. Uh, I'd love to do some more of them at some point because I think they're my favourite German branch because oh, the yeah. early war stuff just looks really yeah. clean and crisp. But you like painting Germans, are you? Uh... Oh yeah, no, <laughs> <what's> <laughs> me? we could we could maybe do an, uh, we could maybe do an episode about something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't think they even have a swash sticker on them, do they? The Fashion Jäger, it's just yeah, what well, they do on their badge. I thought it was just an eagle. Because I know no, 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 be yeah. uh, wow. Isn't it clinging onto one, isn't it, if I remember rightly? No, they're dropping yeah, yeah. in the sea. Get that's in the what bin. it is. <laughs> dropping it in the sea. Yeah. Get in the bin. Yeah, <laughs> listening to that, we have ways. They weren't, yeah, there was, I think it was pretty, it was in entwined with everything, yeah. sadly. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. not, yeah. It yeah, is. The, the Navy had it, didn't they, at yeah. the back and stuff. But yeah. I, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily expect everyone who paints something to that's their ideology but you've got to have, you've got to have one side versus the other otherwise yeah. you know, just because I, I paint um, orcs doesn't mean I want to see the world of men burn no that's right I, I mean, and you've played, so you've played, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've, you've, play, you've played plenty of stormtroopers, and I've never heard you once say you want to destroy a planet with a space station. Oh, I have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Uh, would you prefer sculpting historical type or modern? This is from Peter Smith. Um, the, uh, modern's just too generic. Yeah. Yeah, everyone looks the same now. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about any of you guys, but I have this weird sort of, I guess, period where I'm not. I'm not interested. I find it uncomfortable. Anything past the Falklands feels yeah a bit too close to home. The so. miniatures of like modern day soldiers exist. Yes. Are they oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I'm doing like zombie games and stuff like that, I don't yeah, yeah, mind yeah. if it feels right. But if I'm doing like Russians versus Ukrainians, that just doesn't feel right. Feels a bit sort of well, on the nose. With the guy, much. the Empress miniatures, the guy that does their moderns, um he definitely knows that there's a lot of people in the forces that collect his oh, their stuff. Right. Yeah. And, um, and uh, Empress Miniatures have definitely said, you know, we've got a lot of reference from people that are serving 
they haven't got an issue with it. I think I'll buy to Ian because I watch his stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm just a YouTube fanatic now. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, and uh, he was saying that like World War Two, he can't get with because that's you know too too close. That's like your grandparents. Yeah, people. Yeah, people yeah died I mean, in it's, yeah. you know, I. Yeah, I suppose like my dad was in the services during like the eighties. Yeah. He didn't serve in the Falklands, but yeah. we were like stationed in Germany during like the Cold War and stuff. So I suppose that's why like that period onwards feels a bit awkward. I, weirdly, I suppose super modern like now with yeah. like, the tech that they've got. If I'm having it versus like aliens or like like say zombies and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, then I think, it's I think the the, a bit the problem that disconnected is, is that the increasingly now equipment has hit its. Well, it's not as pinnacle because there'll always be an uh, you can always raise the bar, but I think. Infantry, modern infantryman's equipment has hit a point where it where it's so extraordinarily efficient is that you now end up with about six to seven, God knows, up to God knows how many nations who virtually look identical. Mm. And especially the uh, the multi-cam camouflage, which came in off the back of the cry camouflage, which was originally sort of picked up by the SAS and then everyone sort of got it. You know, you've got the, the camouflage that Americans wear and the camouflage that Brits wear. There's it, the tonal difference between yeah, it. It's so yeah. minor. And if you painted, say, modern-day Marines, modern-day Marines are now carrying a weapon that's a Canadian-licensed version of the Colt M4 system. Yeah. So if you, if, you, if you make one of them and put him in all his gear and then put him next to an American infantryman, they're very, different to, very yeah. little yeah. difference to look yeah. at. It's becoming, I suppose that's a problem with modern infantry doing them is is that it's the only time you get to do it in coolers if you do sas guys you can do them like with baseball caps or delta force guys yeah, baseball yeah. caps big beards thing up when you know that operator term yeah and you so, can get that's the only bit where you get a bit of variety you, in them i suppose you could pretty much do like more burian is pretty much everyone's wearing the same uniform yeah, but at least you yeah. get to paint more different colors yeah, yeah. yeah. all the regiments different yeah, colors yeah. mountain nations who are just wearing the same cap yeah. now it's yeah, yeah. Yeah, and even if you do go full in and try and like do like the iconography, they're probably not even going to wear that. When no, they're no, it's all all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and it's all, all now Vel they're on Velcro patches. Yeah, so yeah and it's all the same, same colour as the camouflage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so yeah. 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 yeah, you could now very rare. You couldn't paint rank on anybody nowadays because it's it's a camouflage slide on a camouflage background. So yeah. you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's designed course, to yeah. stop snipers nailing yeah, them. So yeah. it's yeah. All oh, right. Mm. The SAS guys just be like, I outclass you, you're not allowed to shoot at me. <laughs> That's because they watch a lot of sharp. That's what it is. Yeah. Like, go for the officers first, lads. Go for the officers first. Yeah. That's, why, yeah. they, the that's why officers don't carry pistols anymore. They carry rifles and, and hide in the middle of the squad because they used to lead at the front, yeah. set up binoculars around the neck and a pistol, and the snipers would be going, oh, this is easy. Yeah. I mean, I still like the the aesthetic. Is it Lord Lovett that had the sword or the bow? No, oh. it was Jack, Mad Jack. Oh, Churchill. Mad Jack. Yeah, yeah. Jack yeah. His, yeah. That bow turned up on Antiques Roadshow. No. Did it? Yeah, like 300 quid, they said. Oh, this would be worth 300 quid. Oh, it's in some archery club or something. That 300 they, quid? 300 quid, yeah, for his longbow that no. he, he, he's used in anger. Someone, <laughs> no, someone's not heard enough stories to be yeah, paid, yeah. Paid, yeah. Yeah, was yeah. it a claim or a broadsword? Yeah. It's a claim. It was a, a, yeah, it must have been an officer's pattern. Yeah. Claymore, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 ba and bagpipes. <laughs> yeah. Who's but love it, yeah. I've yeah. got a signed print of Lord Lovett's Piper Millen that's up in my shed Ugo. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> the shed com studio. <laughs> shed com Ugo, because this is the Stoffice. Stoffice, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> studio. Studio office. Shed Ugo. <laughs> studio. Uh, Chris Allen, you probably answered some of this. Uh, I love Paul's work, got quite a few of his scopes from one range or another. How does a new range come about? Is it led by one uh, someone commissioning something specific, or does Paul have an idea and then find someone to support the line? No, it's people coming to me. Um, well, I was saying, because I work with so many, the people I've worked with, I've worked with such a, nice, a long time, it, it's, I can put the odd seed of, it should be yeah, quite yeah. fun, um, especially with like the, the Baron's War Kickstarters that we did and the Arnhem one as well. Mm. I did with Empress Miniatures. That's like, should we do that? Yeah. Because we didn't want to do British Powers because that's been done to that, you know. Yeah. Because I did the, the all the old bolt action miniature, the metal ones, they're all my sculpts of the Warlord Games sell. So we wanted to do them to sort of like, not landing, we want to do them like at least sort of two days in. Yeah. So they're all yeah. kits sort of. Yeah, that makes sense. Hanging off. What people want when they're doing like the yeah, yeah. battle on the bridge, isn't yeah, it? That's yeah, the perimeter around the Hartenstein Hotel, that yeah, kind yeah. of. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I suppose like with 
mentioned you did Kickstart as well. How, how do you define that as, a, as an approach for like launching stuff? Did that work quite well for you? Yeah, it works well. I, I, mean, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it does allow us to, to be able to produce everything in one go and be able to say, right, well, it's going to be out at this time. Yeah. So it does allow us to sort of produce a lot of figures in a, you know, a lot of time. Um, and it does generate a lot of enthusiasm as well, and it does build up a community and people, yeah. Yeah, because we had Annie on, and she said that she used to just release stuff, and then it was just like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Kickstarter, yeah. She, there was a lot more drive. Yeah, yeah. Mantic, yeah. Mantic swear by it, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. worked well for them. Yeah, it's worked well for, certainly for me, with the Baron's War, and, um, you know, it's... it's the good thing about it is because is you have built up like a lot of enthusiasm, you can then go, oh, I can make this, you know. And then yeah. you, it, it, it's like a just an enthusiasm loop. Yeah, yeah. Which is really good. And people don't even seem to manage to seem to care about the waiting scale either, do they? Uh, I think as long as you manage it and you yeah. say, this is, we're going to do it at this time. Because um, I'm, I'm quite quick and sculpting because I don't I hate having something hanging over because mm. just anxiety levels just go through the roof oh, I've got to do this, like have homework yeah, anxiety yeah. <laughs> so you know being able to get the figures produced and just say look we've already we've got this ready to go mm. people know that it's in the it's being produced as opposed to well we'll, we'll release it sometime yeah as long as you say right we're we're going to we're putting our neck on the line we're saying that it's going to be out this time yeah and people soon yeah People take that on board and they know that when they they back. Yeah, because I think, you know, you say 18 months and people yeah. don't seem to care as long as they you give them a, you yeah, know, yeah. An, honest, an honest prediction, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I, d I did it with Crooked Dice. I got um, one of their sets because I quite like their rule system, 7TV, um, and that gives me that kind of excuse to use modern day warfare guys and yeah, yeah. then get yeah. British Tommies, give them random builders' helmets and paint them in orange. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Baddies. Absolutely. Um, and then they started doing lots of lots of stuff, and they did one of their rule systems, and it was like a year's wait. And I was just like, "But I know I'm going to get it because yeah. it's crooked dice, and they've released so much stuff over the years." And I guess it's the same with once you've got that name built yep. up as well, that kind of really helps. Yeah. I mean, well, the add-on bonuses just keeps people enthused as well, doesn't it? When it hits a certain point, you go, "Oh, we'll add this and we'll yeah. add that," and that it just feeds it really well. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, our last question from Chris Hyde. Not a question, but just wanted to say thank you to Paul for the amazing Irish War of Independence and very British Civil War stuff. Uh, figures he sculpted originally for Musketeer Miniatures. Would love to see some more very very British Civil War figures from him. Is that something you ever... Yeah, well, do? the British Civil War, so the, the Irish War of Independence, that was, that was kind of commissioned with a guy that lived in Ireland as well. And that was, I was a bit wary of that to start with because yeah. it could be really contentious because of what the Irish forces were under the banner. But actually, when you read into it, it's, it's it took a lot of reading to sort of say, OK, yeah. this is not the same, um, but I can see why people would... But the British Civil War, that was just... It, it sort of spawned a group of gamers out of the... What was the Richard III film with um, Ian McKellen? Oh, the, yeah, 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 this version of it, which is sort of like in the 1920s, isn't it? Oh, yeah, no, yes. it's sort of 1940s. 1940s, yeah. sorry, yes. 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 Um, it's got about the whole tank comes through the wall, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, so Correct. that's all like, imagine, you know, yeah. what, and then that sort of snowballed. Because if I'm right in thinking that you've got like different sort of like political parties yeah. that are yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because, you know, by being a scout. Scouse, so, so socialist, militant sort of family that we are. And I said to my wife, my wife said, oh, have you got an interview tomorrow? And I was explaining who you were. And I said, and he's done this range called the very British Civil War. And she said, oh, all right. She said, what what time period is that? And I briefly explained it. And she went, you better have done a load of Scouse dockers or I won't be impressed. <laughs> well, I did, I did a load of workers sort of in dungarees. Yeah. And I think they were class people had done a faction for like Republic of Liverpool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. 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 obviously communist. they really got so Scouts the Dockers got so gobby that um when he was a good old uh, when he was when he was in charge of Darren's as uh, Churchill sent a warship up and docked it straight in front of the, the, the docks in Liverpool. Oh wow. And when the um when the Welsh miners were on strike and uh, they, he was told that Welsh miners were, were uh, starting to starve because they were on strike and weren't earning any money. He said, maybe we should send the army down there and put some lead in their belly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. 
So wow. he would. So, she, so he was. You know, Churchill was the right man at the right time for a very specific few years. Well, yeah. Either, <laughs> and he decided that he's, not he's, so good. Yeah, you know, the better that he was. He had a, a Secretary of State. He was a bit, you know, interested. Yeah, that, yeah that, that musketeer minute because I, I was making stuff because I was interested at the time, and then Bill, who had musketeer miniatures, was saying, "Look, if you make it, I'll put it in a mold." Mm. And I'd be like watching. I was, it was like a, a home guard. Um, film yeah. like clip, and they're all on roller skates. <laughs> I was like, that would make a perfect messenger. <laughs> yeah, and they was like, oh, what would they wear? And I was like, oh, there's an early war tanker's helmet, or like, uh, I'll put that on him. And like, loads of guys in cricket. I think I did a tank crew with like a, the old style bicycle hat and a <laughs> helmet. Yeah. yeah, and then um, I was, I, I think I was walking from one room to the other, from like my living room to my old flat and a coast was on and they mentioned like in the 1930s in our outer hebrides the royal mail were trying out this rocket for sending post <laughs> it's like oh, I mean, that's <laughs> got to be made <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i just like googled and found that they, yeah they they had this and there was like a film made about it yeah oh wow and it, it it's literally made one for musketeer miniatures and it was just yeah so postal pretty service based on fact, eh? yeah yeah <laughs> yeah because you've got to base all like these what yeah. ifs you've got to base them in a kernel of truth yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, otherwise it it just doesn't work but i did for my own stuff when we moved so when when we sold by, by action miniatures it allowed me to to get a deposit for a place where we moved to so I set up a company called Mutton Shop Miniatures. I was going to say, that's your Facebook page, isn't it? Or is it still? Yeah, it's, I've tried to delete it for ages. I was going to say, it's still <laughs> yeah, around. It's, it's still around, around yeah. <laughs> so the, the first figures I did was, I was like a kid, I loved Wind in the Willows. Mm. So I was like, oh, could, Wind in the Willows, as humans. So you could try and, so I did those as the windy chaps. And then I did like a load of weaselly, like earthy types as um, the weasels. And then that just snowballed as well and did uh, some odd things. And then there was a, a Maxim gun that was someone had put on like a, a four-wheeled motorbike sort of thing. Oh, uh, cool, yeah. And I went, right, Ian, can you make a Vickers machine gun on a like a, a quad? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we made that. So we had that and the, like a Morris, but with the back end of a Carden Lloyd. <laughs> Like a Mo- Morris Tilly, you know, like a, a small car, yeah, but with the back end of a Cardin Lloyd tankette as a half track. Just, <laughs> oh, oh, I think I've seen that, yeah, 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 just that would be fun, half car, half tank, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you get half tracks and you get well, what, half. That? half cars, yeah. <laughs> I'd absolutely love a miniatures game that is like a f- where like the armies are people that work in services because I think posties it'd be amazing well yeah <laughs> because like there's they have their own like tube tunnels in London that I think yeah. have been turned into a museum now and you yeah, can go yeah. around yeah. and they, the, they've got the logistics well, people- they know the landscape <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they have those like motorised um, when they're carrying Car- big parcels yeah. and everything you know put a machine gun on that but that was the beauty it's with like, it because it's such a like a yeah. sandboxing if you yeah. had an idea Oh, what would they have? Because you had like basically like the Jarrow Marchers, but with shotguns, didn't you as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah stuff is, like that. People yeah. could just come up. I saw those hinterland miniatures. Yes, had, yeah. had, had come up a fair bit. Um, yeah, they, they people just use their imagination, and because they were infused about it, and because they bought in with the imagination and their own story, they had such varied. But they all look cohesive. Yeah. They all it, it looks like an epi- a mad episode of Dad's Army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could, we, could we make a box set that's like Royal Mail versus UPS, and it's called Going Postal? Oh, <laughs> I know it's yeah, those... you know what I'd like is you know them, uh, you know that American, the Americans have that uh, their version of that. They have that gun variant of the Hercules, don't they? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. the AC one thirty. Yeah, it's got all the guns down one side of it, yeah, all yeah, varying yeah. sizes. Do you think, imagine one of them just as like a, um, you know, as a London Routemaster bus? I think, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure I've seen like the old, um, the steam, because like Matchbox, you know, they used to do the die cast models yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. People were just like the steam trucks that they used to have, yeah. just like loaded with Vickers machine guns and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, bus drivers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was a, there was Train a company, drivers, all sorts. 
in Scotland that did the the rules and the faction books, and they did like art, um, plates that you could just glue onto diecast models to just up gun a model T uh, Ford okay, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's kind of... You know the one I was just saying before about um, talking about um, when do you sort of stop with sort of modern day, uh, with modern day infantry? Um, but, uh, my friends used to work for Battlefront and if you remember they had um, they had um, a version of it that was set in the early 80s, the Cold War. Team Yankee, isn't Team it? Yankee yeah. based off the books, yeah. yeah. And uh, a guy from Northern Ireland phoned and said, you know in the range of like the British military vehicles, he says, do you do the um the pig which was the big armored car yeah, yeah. they used to drive around northern ireland it gone by the time i got there and he went no it's not in the range he said you know what he says the amount of people in northern I and he's been northern ireland obviously right the root of the very this who come into my model shop my gaming and store and want... say do you sell them oh wow he said because i think they want to make little dioramas because yeah. they can lay their hands on early 80s you know british troops carrying yeah. slrs yeah, and yeah, yeah. berets on and stuff but they can't, no one was making the pigs, he said, because he said, if you made them, he said, I could sell you out of them. He oh. said, the amount of people, you think, mm. you think they'd want to get as far away from it as humanly yeah. possible, yeah. want to make dioramas with it. In I suppose well. that's like the only thing with like miniature wargaming is like, even if, like, like take World War Two for instance, you know, you got, as as a hobbyist, I want, I, I would do both sides. I would do like, yeah. the British versus yeah. the Germans. It's like that controversial video. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, the video that won't die. <laughs> <laughs> but it, what was your take on that? Well, well I, I suppose it could have been handled differently. I think it started because... Are we allowed to talk about it? I don't... Oh, well, I'll, I'll, yeah. Through, through fear of, like, getting... Some picking a scab, I suppose. You know? <laughs> it is a scab. I mean... Personally, I, I've been doing historical war game for years and I don't look at them and go, oh, they're the Nazis, I don't want to play them because I don't want people to think I'm a racist. Yeah. I've never had that connection. Most people I play with have never had that connection. They're but like, do you think that's because you're not playing in a... Because what it sounded like, it was from a competition, tournament style, historical gaming that he they were talking about. I don't know now. Because they were saying if you were playing against someone, they turned up with a... See what you mean, yeah, yeah. But if you, if you were saying, right, this is the battle we want to create. Well, obviously, if we're doing the Battle of Arnhem, yeah, we're gonna have to have the baddies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah basically, we're gonna have to have elements that are SS, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what fought. But we're not. That's because we're recreating the battle. Yeah, yeah. But it's not that I've gone to a tournament with an SS army. That's yeah, I could see where well, he's coming from. Well, yeah, 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 I could see. You stepped your way to your table. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did get triggered a bit when he said the trouble with war, historical war gaming. Well, that's it's a vast thing. Yeah, and you're yeah, talking yeah. about well, a very small part. Well, of you it. know, and we've we me and me and Peter have talked about this before. Is that I, I'm not taking oh, I'm not taking a side on, on uh, I'm not taking the sides of the the Germans on this, but plenty of people join armies to help their country. They don't join armies for a political mm. gain. They, you know, America, Germany had lost a lot of land post-World War I through, mainly through the French and other things. They joined that army because obviously if you think in world terms, them two wars were very close together mm. and they joined because they felt that bits of their country had been stolen away and they joined because they feel like they wanted to do the best for their nation. And whether you join any nationality of army around the world you generally hopefully join it because you're trying to do the best for your country do you know what i mean i think plenty of people yeah. are german soldiers but it doesn't necessarily mean they were all nazis well, no, I, and i think is, there's is plenty the where but I think yeah plenty I, that I, weren't. I do sort of look at you know sort of thinking about it and i have to sort of i had you know thought it's not something i'd i'd have to think long and hard about sculpting because of the the baggage that comes, well, not baggage is the wrong word, with whatever yeah. the historical context that comes with it. Um, but it's, yeah, I think that I can understand where he was coming from. With yeah, it. Oh, I completely get where yeah, he's yeah. coming from. But I, I it's, it, I just felt the historical war gaming as a whole was it kind of a, under attack <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> the thing is it's like going well you should never play because are we going to assume that the knights templar didn't ransack villages yeah, or yeah. towns they only ever just killed 
other combatants. They didn't kill civilians. Yeah. That, you know, American GIs during Vietnam were hor- went horrific. And yeah. it's this thing, as you're going, it's very easy to just go, look at the Second World War in black and white, to go, and they're the good guys, they're the bad guys, and as simple as that. But it's like, where do you draw your historical point where you go, all right, after that, it's okay. You know, and it's, well, it's I mean, tough, if, isn't it? If I look at some of the, my, my buddies from like Workshop that were into World War Two and stuff like that, they um, th- there was quite a few German staff, and they yeah. always felt uncomfortable playing as their own nation because they didn't want to get that stand. weird, yeah, sort mm-hmm. of like label as being like supportive of that that movement. But as I've always said, not every Jim was a Nazi, not every Nazi was a German. German. Yeah, um, and it's you know that you know we have plenty of them here. Probably absolutely yeah, everywhere yeah. else and everywhere yeah. else, but. I mean, as a as a war gamer, uh, I want to reenact battles. I yeah. don't want to follow a political ideal, yeah. um, but there are people out there that do. Yeah, and, and they I've are touched yeah. in the head a little yeah. potentially. And looking, you know what I mean. But if we look at it from the end of Return of the Jedi, we're completely under the we completely understand that Ewoks eat stormtroopers, but yeah. we still see them as cute. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's okay with that. <laughs> everyone's I mean, okay with that. And again, <laughs> if we're going down the Star Wars analogy, the rebels. Cause genocide because on that Death Star, well, there's a lot of people. There's going to yeah. be nurseries, yeah. but, oh, there's going to be canteen staff. That's it. I saw, I saw an interesting post about this by saying, like, you know, but it was a legitimate. The Death Star is a legitimate military, military target, target, whereas Alderaan wasn't. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, well, yeah. That, yeah. But you know, if you think, about, but if you want to go that way, Death Star oh, Two. God. Yeah. Death Star 2, there must have been a lot of contractors under that. There's only half oh, built. Yeah, There's yeah, only yeah. half Those built. contracts yeah. have families. Plumbers, plumbers <laughs> scaffolders, all of them people that were. All the manual and the, labourers, and, yeah. and depends on what Star Wars law you believe, a lot of the a lot of the work staff who were involved in the building of Death Star 2 were Slaves? enslaved Wookiees. Oh. A lot and of dead Wookiees. All those people on that prison planet in Andor, they're out of a job now. I, know, yeah. <laughs> I love how we're going deep on this mega yeah. issue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My... But then again, they might have they might have hired more in 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 uh, Imperial naval boat patrols after yeah, that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear, I mean, that's yeah. just one factory out of God knows how many of that. I suppose. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so the video in question that we we're talking about. I think my my take of it was, I mean, or my impression was. Um, we need to do a video about historical wargaming. And if like, if we did a video that said, let's paint this Napoleonic guy, it wouldn't get as many views as uh, let's paint the Space Marine. Yeah. Um, so my impression of it, whether it's right or wrong, is, right, how do we package up a, a video about historical wargaming? Well, it's not as popular. Are there issues with it? Let's talk about it. Yeah. And And I think I was sort of like, uh, and Mikey from Hellstone Wargaming, who we've had as a guest on the channel, did uh, like a commentary. Sort yes, of I think I watched that on, yeah. on the video and stuff because somebody did a video reply. Yeah, and this, yeah. That, and then, um, Mordian yeah. Glory did. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and 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 that had like an interesting thumbnail um, that I think has since been changed. Um, but I, yeah, it was kind of like when it was like, okay, so we're talking about this and then there's a sponsorship for a... His, like yeah, a, yeah, that's a, 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 a game. War, and and that, was, game. that was where yeah. I was sort of like... Mm. Oh, yeah, I forgot all about that as well. Yeah. 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 Warships, wasn't it? Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I'm, I'm good friends with both of the folks on the channel. Uh, yeah. I, like, I, like, like, I don't think contact. anyone's done yeah. anything wrong. Yeah. No. Everybody's yeah. got an epitome yeah. to their so, opinion. Well, that's the thing. I think it is just an opinion, but yeah, when you're pitching it to... People like us that yeah, yeah. for years. It's like oh, that's it. Yeah, because I, I feel attacked. well when you said about me, when you <laughs> well, it just creates about, more opinions, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? And yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, when yeah, you said about me coming on. It's like well, that's your uh, this view. This is not getting any views. It's like a war gaming <laughs> yeah, sculpture. Yeah, yeah. it's but, not no, the algorithm. No. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but you know, it's sometimes it's the interest of of who people are and what they do is the the bigger part than than you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah algorithm is important, but. I think you've done a lot for like miniature war gaming. Oh, and that's oh, very arguably. Yeah, you get quite a narrowed <laughs> sitting in your shed yeah, yeah. at a desk just making stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, like all the conversations I used to have in the studio, like, you know, your name is probably one of the, of, other than the people in the studio, is the only other real big name outside of, and like, get, you know, trying to think oh, of some that's... others, but Paul Hicks, like, it did, has done a lot of, Miniatures, so you know, you've been that's, yeah, that's just comes to surprise to me. I have to say, I was surprised that you had some questions. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, 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 I've got a question for you actually. Where do you stand on the whole idea that um, Games Workshop are now 
a, a sculpting studio as opposed to sculptors? Do you think it should be that the individual is still a, still named for their work, or do you think being yeah, I because uh, yeah, I used to love knowing who sculpted a figure. I was saying that it was always the Perrys. That, you Mostly, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then again, it was always the Perrys because those are the ones that look naturally like a historical army. Mm. So especially like the Dogs of War, that was amazing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, look, it was nice to see them credited. And it's happened to me where I wasn't allowed to tell anyone that I'd sculpted figures for them. And it was like, that's, why would you not want... That's your bread and butter as well, isn't it? Yeah. Because you need to be put out there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, luckily, that was quite, that was a few years ago now. But now, I hopefully have got to the, the point where people will say, look, these are sculpted by Paul Hicks and that might actually help the range. Um, but yeah, I would, it would be nice to be credited mm. and nice to see people credited. Yeah. yeah I, agree. I think it's only a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Were you I in Paris? I was like that with uh, with jazz. Jazz, and with jazz was like, oh, those, I had to buy it. Those concept they don't show those anymore. When like Battlefleet, they did when Battlefleet Gothic. Even before it was a thing, mm. it was like a, a page of drawings in a white yeah, dwarf. Yeah. Mm. I know all the sketches for like the boarding, which they've sort of used again for the kill team. Yeah, yeah. But they were like so much just to. I never ever bought the jazz book, and I still to this day kick myself yeah, for yeah. the concept book. Did, did he? Did, was there one? Yeah, yeah, there was one. And the funny thing is, it had what they called they called the Necron destroyers. Yes, the floating yeah. ones. And they, when they came out, they never looked like the art in the book, which was a far beefier thing. Yeah. And then years later, they did another variant of destroyer. That's another rank of one, and it looks like so that, that art from it, like the very early nineties. Probably you can't get it anymore. It's because they're going to keep going back and match. That's why yeah, they yeah. bought them all back up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why, why someone's not? job at uh, someone's job at Games Workshop is just buying all of them on eBay yeah, off yeah. everybody yeah. <laughs> so they can mine them. We Named someone, delete history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, um, again, thank you for coming on, oh, uh, no, on the show. So, and it was uh, kind of a big thing for me when you messages on the on, on the older uh, awesome. emails to say, oh, no, I'll send you some um, Baron's War stuff. And you got, I got a little pic, a little mini of uh, Rotherman <laughs> Peach. Uh, so that was a big thing for me. So thank you very much for that. No, no problem at all. No, thanks for having us. It's. Uh... Is there anywhere that people can contact you and law? Like, do you have like Instagram or Twitter? I, or? I have a, a Facebook page. I normally post up pictures and uh, model airplanes that I'm making. Nice. What's so that called? Paul Hicks. Just Paul Hicks. Nice. Yeah. And my t um, on Twitter because I I decided that during lockdown I'll stop making model airplanes. Uh, oh, so wicked. it's just a childhood thing that sort of made cheered me up so it's, yeah so it's just filled with models rugby and model <laughs> airplanes yeah <laughs> rugby, nice model Very airplanes nice. well as always thank you for watching uh, I'll just wait at the table and just bash my hand up <laughs> um, don't forget to the like and subscribe and of course we have a Patreon uh, if you want to see this early which obviously by the time this is out yeah. you probably won't but any other ones we do you'll see them early so do join our Patreon we've got a great uh, community lots of people uh, join it and many benefits so do check it out so until our next time I guess adieu Farewell. Auf Wiedersehen, goodbye. Oh, yeah. I'm not a camera. I don't know why I'm waving. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs>